Yeah, you can still do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's being recorded. We're not on the air, but it's not being broadcast. So it's right out. <laughs> you think not? Are we singing is being broadcast, but you can't see us. Oh, I'm going to smash some of these glasses. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, February 4th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning. Would the clerk help me with the roll call, please? Chairman Harley. I'm here. Vice Chair Roberts. <coughs> yes, sir. I'm here. Mr. Hughes. Mr. Oikel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Mr. Homicki. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antonia. Yep, I'm here. Ms. Murphy. Here. Alrighty, so uh, that's nine of us. Everybody will be participating. Uh, I believe <coughs> last week everybody was here except, uh, or two weeks ago everybody was here except Lisa. Have you familiarized yourself with the record? These are all being held over. Are you comfortable participating this evening? I, I am, thank you. All right, very good. So with that, uh, would you call the first? Item 3.1, public hearing, uh, application number 202919Z, Phoenix uh, 1210 LLC, special permit for two medical office buildings, 8,000 square feet, and an employee daycare at 1210 Salestine Highway. All right. This is continued from 122, Thank you. Would the applicant join us at the microphone and introduce yourself? And uh, I guess we can play this by ear. I have some notes from the last time that could prompt the discussion, or if you have something prepared that you want to just jump into. Just a real quick. Good evening, Mike Panic, Phoenix 1210 LLC, owner of the property at 1210 Silestein Highway. Um, I. Uh, just wanted to start by reiterating uh, from our continued meeting. Um, since that time, we have, uh, at the direction of the board, resubmitted a revised site plan, and uh, we resubmitted a uh, response to comments from the planning department, the fire marshal, and engineering. We have submitted uh, a parking concept for 36 Mill Street. We have submitted a structure report from Anchor Engineering with respect to the culverts that run underneath Puritan Road. And we've uh, submitted a deed uh, to the 36 Mill Street property. Um, I believe that the continuance uh, was to allow you time to review the staff comments from two weeks ago uh, and our submissions to those comments. Um, so with that, I don't think we have any more as far as presentation, I think. We probably just go to you know more comments and questions. Okay. I know the public spoke at the last meeting. I'm not sure if there, you know, will be that opportunity for anyone here that wants to do that again. But we yes. welcome that if it's allowed. Yes. Uh, we'll get to the the public comment because uh, it's an open hearing, so we'll allow them that opportunity as the time permits here. Um, in terms of my notes, uh, basically they were what's new in the landscaping with respect to the neighbors in the back in particular. Um, have they come up with any better ways to uh, improve the water quality, working with Derek and town staff? Did they discuss with DOT, uh, at least so we can have some understanding of what their reaction is to the traffic? Uh, were there any changes to sidewalk in terms of continuity on Mill Street? Uh, and then any, any feedback on the signal down on to the south of Silas Dean Highway, or just the signal in general from the access to Silas Dean, any confirmation otherwise from, uh, from DOT. Those were my notes, just to kind of spur the discussion. I, I am a made aware that they gave you, they staff gave you comments today. We did, we did receive an email comments today and we're prepared to respond if needed. Excellent, because we probably haven't even read them sitting here, so um, maybe you could run through them and characterize them? Absolutely. Sounds good. <coughs> uh, the comments were dated uh, today, February 4th, um, and there are 10 items on the list. I'm going to just go in order. Um, 
uh, I'm just going to paraphrase a little, or you want me to read the entire comment? No, okay, so uh, number one uh, talks about the parking spaces that were discussed at the last meeting, 610 parking spaces being asked, uh, requested, with the current parking requirements being 480. Uh, I just want to remind the board that um, in my discussion two weeks ago, I stated that of the 610 spark parking spaces, <coughs> excuse me, 36 of them will be under building number two. So surface spaces are, are, are really be considered, you know, 574. And I think it would be more accurate to compare 574 to the 480. I did bring up at the last meeting also that I'm not aware of any regulations as to maximum parking. Um, I, uh, uh, as a bullet point for number one, it goes on to say uh, that that uh, amount of parking increases the stormwater runoff that can adversely affect downstream wetlands and watercourses. I do want to bring to the attention of the Planning and Zoning that at the previous Inland Wetlands Committee uh, and at the request of the town and the committee, we added to the site four oil and water separators to the parking area to help uh, with that stormwater runoff and the cleaning up of it before it hits the wetlands and water courses. Um, again, that was not part of the original plan, but we added it as part of our application with um, in the wetlands, which was approved. Um, and it was also discussed uh, that the mitigation was limited during the inland wetlands um, situation. <clears throat> um, going to bullet point number two, uh, it identifies building areas and number, oh, uh, first of all, it says the proposed buildings one and two have the same floor area, except there were unbalanced uh, parking as far as when we're going to construct it with 511 spaces being part of phase one, let's call it, and 99 being part of phase two. Uh, basically, the reason for that on the plan, and I can point it out to you if you'd like, is that the, uh, in order to get building one functional, we need to have continuity and flow within the parking lot, and in order to do that, we have to create the so-called extension of the Puritan Road driveway that funnels through the islands and circles back out to the Mill Street exit. So in order to pave all of that, everything, in looking at it on the plan, I'm not sure if it's coordinated, but everything to the south of that when you look at the plan or to the bottom of the page, you know, kind of has to be paved. Otherwise, you're going to have a weird area where you're going to have a square of no paving. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to not pave everything to below the driveway that connects the two. So um, that is the reason why we're proceeding with the paving uh, as, as discussed and leaving the area <coughs> for phase two as that area that's to the left and the right on the plan of building two. Um, so that's our, our answer to that. I, I also want to say, and not that it makes a difference to the town, but it definitely makes a difference to me because it affects the price of the job that Three mobilizations uh, increases the cost of the project if we have to mobilize the, the uh, paving people three times to do paving in three phases as opposed to two when the project is a two-phase project. <clears throat> um, bullet point number three uh, basically speaks to the properties which I brought to the table that I own in various uh, states around the country, and it says that it identifies the building area and number of parking spaces, uh, however, uh, if this represents all available parking or only utilized parking spaces at the sites, um, which could be substantially different, uh, the answer to that is, is that if I had done it the way that that was suggested, that would actually be to my favor if I only gave you the, what we were using and not what was there. Um, because obviously the, the number of parking spaces are there would go up quite greatly if there was more spaces we weren't using. So the spaces are definitely the actual spaces and not the used spaces. <clears throat> um, continuing on, uh, there's now a list of recommendations. Uh, a says, uh, uh, add a third, the, the adding of the third phase of the project, uh, and to be constructed only if deemed necessary by the P and Z once, uh, the facilities are operational. I am pretty clear that at the last meeting, um, we demonstrated in multiple ways um, how uh, the parking of 610 spaces is needed. Uh, one way was the discussion we had about the current building at 1260 out front and the you know parking situation there when you sometimes have to circle the lot. <clears throat> we also talked about the other sites that I mentioned, which are a half a dozen properties that I own around the country that have the same 
um, you know, larger parking ratios. And then the ITE trip generation data uh, was shown that there are some outliers, uh, even in the small sample size that that does, that there is parking that, you know, is uh, in excess of six spaces per thousand. So I, I believe, uh, and I believe from the comments that we had in the limited time we had last meeting that I think we satisfied, um, uh, at least I think we satisfied the need. I don't think that there's any doubt that we need the parking. Um, Not that. How about the access out to the Silo Stream was more parking? I mean, it's down to the worst level at this point, right? And it was going to increase the problem there? With more parking, George? Congestion? With more parking? More parking for it, yeah. And say, he can say, well, they can go out the Mill Street. And I even, I even heard, you know, he's got going out the Hewitt Street or through 1860. You know, more parking means more congestion, right? Well, I mean, well, well, I, let me, I just, sure, I'll, I'll let Mark speak on that for a minute. I, I, I just want to say that the fact that I have more spaces, I unless I didn't need them, I, I don't understand the correlation to, to traffic. Well, if they, if the employees tend to leave more of them, you got more spaces mm -hmm. at the congested times of the day, like your maximum hour is what, four o'clock or something in the mm -hmm. afternoon. Mm -hmm. Then you might have more congestion out in that pile of steam and that worries me. Okay, let me have Mark Vertucci uh, Vertucci from, would, yeah. yeah, let me have Mark uh, speak to that. Mark, if you would. Good evening again, I'm Mark Fertucci, uh, Senior Transportation Engineer at Fuss and O'Neill. Um, <clears throat> as I did mention um, the last time when I, uh, I reviewed the traffic study uh, findings, um, you know, the, there's an existing delay coming out of that driveway, uh, but what we really focused on is the fact we have that second access now to, um, to Mill Street. Uh, so that will enable, that doesn't exist today, so although we're increasing traffic, we're also providing an entirely, uh, you know, a second um, egress and conduit to get out to the Silas Dean via the traffic what signal. Do you mean? Explain that to me. Because uh, the second access you did have last time when you talked about the 480 spaces. Are you saying that doesn't exist today? <coughs> oh, I know it doesn't exist right. today. But we're right. not talking about today. Well, the traffic study was done based upon what uh, it would be with your parking. And now you've increased the parking. Mm -hmm. We've increased, right, we're increasing the traffic generation from the site, but right. uh, a very, a, a significant portion of that will now go out Mill Street um, via that driveway, so they can then get out to the Silas Dean via, via the traffic signal. Right. So it's not, it's not a significant increase in traffic to the existing driveway out to the Silas Dean. And the other thing I wanted to note was the, the parking generation and the trip generation are also two different things or different calculations. Um, so just because your, you know, your parking rate may increase, uh, the, the trip is, you know, the trips are a completely different calculation. We use ITE trip generation rates, which are. So what you're saying with mm -hmm. this increased parking, there's no additional problem out on the side of the street. There's no the there, there, there is from what you just said. Correct. I mean, correct. Yeah, the, the trip generation is what we're looking at as far as impacts to the Silas Dean, not the parking. Mm -hmm. Well, can't argue with you about it. <laughs> You're the expert on that, but I would think there would be at the maximum function of day. I really would. I do have a question uh, about that. I do sure. have a question about that. So. It's my understanding that your level of service is going to be a little bit, is going to worsen in the morning, in the a.m., not in the p.m. Is that correct? So it it'll, it'll, it, it's only in the morning you'll have, we'll have that issue. It does go down one level of service, um, but the, you know, it's near the threshold. So, okay, yeah, you know, from like an E to an F. Yeah. So, you know, if you look at the seconds of delay increase, it's, it's really not as substantial. And, it's the afternoon peak hour, really, that we have the majority of the, the traffic coming out of the site. And that's, that approach is um, uh, actually, that, that's operating at a C for the, um, 
uh, right turn out and, and an F for the left. The, the, F, the left turn is an F today. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's a difficult movement to make, which yeah. is why it's so important to have that second egress to mill so they can use the traffic signal. So my question is also that when when you came up, I'm assuming you have assumptions like how many how many percentage of vehicles will go out mm -hmm. via Silas Dean and and possibly another percentage of vehicles that'll go out towards Mill Street in the a.m. and the p.m. Was there like, did you have any assumptions like that or? or well, well we did. About that? Yeah, we did. Um, we're, we're expecting about half the traffic to use each driveway, so. Um, for both the a.m. and the p.m.? For, for both peak hours, it's correct. So, you know, we have 50% uh, coming out of the mill driveway uh, Mill Street, 20% of those head towards the Silas Dean, and then the other 50% go directly out to the Silas Dean. Um, okay. So about 30% of the site traffic would be making that left turn out. Mm -hmm. um, and while I'm up here, just um, Mr. Harley had, had asked the question about our coordination with DOT. I did mm -hmm. talk to them, but you know, without having seen the traffic study in the site plan, they, they wanted us really to get the uh, get the submission in. So we actually just submitted today. Our, we have an administrative decision review that the process we have to go through with OSTA. Um, so they've just received it. Um, but I can say with uh, near certainty that they would not uh, allow a traffic signal at the site driveway. Um, it, for two reasons, really, the, the, the volume warrants aren't satisfied. I did check those. Um, you need to reach a certain volume level in the peak hours um, based on the MUTCD, the Manual Uniform Traffic Control Devices, as warrants. So we don't, we don't satisfy those, but we also, um, the well, intersection well, is, right. is close yeah. to, the, to the next light down and, and not too far from Mill Street either, and it's all on a coordinated system, so adding another a signal to that um, really becomes problematic for um, interrupting the vehicle progression on the Silas Dean. There is a progression? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to ask my chairman, and then you maybe, you can post for me. Um, I don't understand because I don't see it on any plans here, of course. So I, I guess I can understand a lot. But there are no turn lanes out on the Silas Dean left or right. I'm not talking about the ones in the driveway. No, the two of them. Uh, I'm the, talking the, about them out there. Mm -hmm. Now, can I ask you that, in the, other words, the State Traffic Commission, when they formally go there, <coughs> they will determine whether those something has to be done yeah, out yeah, there yeah. separately? Maybe a turn lane or two on the side of the scene north of town? So it's my, my recollection. I think you can answer that, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, there, now, there is a left I turn lane uh, right. provided southbound yeah. on the Silas Dean Highway for access into the site. So that yeah. is a benefit of the site. It does and get. That is out there. It gets it, it gets the left turns out of the. I looked at this thing and I couldn't even see it on there. <laughs> okay, I'm not an engineer, so I can't always read these things. I didn't see any turn lanes out there. On the Silas Dean Highway, when you pass Liberty Bank to make the left hand turn, they do have one. There is one. So and that's a, for your existing facility there. It's, yeah. it's all, all, it's all three properties are all, right all benefit by that, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how about the other way, which is more important to think of? The south way. The south, the you south mean the uh, turn, north? South, south, I would think. <coughs> turning, uh, coming out of the site, there will be, there'll be a left south, and a right yeah. turn lane. Yeah, there's going to be two lanes coming out of Puritan Drive, a left and a right turn and lane. That I know, but I'm talking about out on the Silas Dean, not on the driveway. So on the Silas Dean, you have a left turn in northbound. If you're coming in northbound from the south and making a right turn in, it's just there's no dedicated right turn lane there. They would just how, turn. How about turn going in. out and going left? Going out of the site, there'll be a, a left turn lane and a right turn lane leaving right. the site. A left turn, yeah, going out onto the Silas Dean. Right. right. There'll Is be there two. a lane to accommodate that out on the Silas Dean rather than the two free lanes? There's two two lanes in each direction on the Silas Dean, so somebody making a left turn out would be able to to merge into the left uh, travel lane the left, southbound. The left south travel lane. Right. And that's good because they're not coming too fast from Mill Street. There are platoons. Yeah, I mean the traffic signal there does um, interrupt the traffic flow, so there are gaps. Um, 
I, I won't argue People have to be patient for those gaps. But <laughs> we're going to be right. That's going to be yeah. a heavy turn. Who am I? I'm not a traffic engineer. <laughs> So I just study this stuff from yeah, if, if DOT, so. if the State Traffic Commission decides that they need to change the striping out there, they will. If they need they to do will. anything out there, th the they will. Yeah, 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 thank you. That's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Thank you. Um, just to Mark, before you go. Sure. Oh, sorry, Mark. <coughs> so, so the MUTCD calls for X number of parking spaces with this square footage, 480-ish or something, right? And, and you're proposing 600, that would infer that you're expecting more trips coming. But you didn't use more trips in your calculations, right? You used the I, you know, the MUTCD or the trip generation models. The, the IT trip the generation was used for the trip, you're right, the traffic generation from the so, site. So, so there's kind of a disconnect the between the two, is there not? So there's kind of a disconnect between the two, is there not? You're expecting more traffic and providing parking for such, but you're not proposing more traffic in your traffic analysis. Well, you know, uh, the IT manual is both the parking, they have a parking generation manual and a trip generation manual, and they are, there is a, a wide range in, in data sets. So, you know, for, for the parking manual, you know, you have, there's, as Mike had presented, there's some, higher end of the scale on the medical office side, some that are generating a much higher parking demand than others. And they come up with an average rate, they come up with an 85th percentile rate. Um, it's the same deal with the traffic uh, generation as well. So, um, but we, you know, we, we go with uh, typically the, um, the higher, you know, the, the trip, trip generation manual is an average rate as a fitted curve rate, which is usually higher. We typically take the more conservative one, which is what we did here, and go with a higher rate. Um, on the parking side, we're, um, we're relying more on, you know, Mike's experience here to say that the parking um, demand is near the higher end of what the ITE scale would uh, project. But, yeah, it's a popular misconception that the parking and the trip generation are are correlated and same one in the same, and they um, sometimes they're similar, but they're they're really they're totally two different calculations, um, depending on the uh, you know the uh, nature of the use. Yeah. Any other questions for Mark while we're on them, or I'm just going to ask? Do have oh, one more go um, Parking. Since you're talking about parking, parking spaces, I noticed that on some locations you had parking was like 16 feet long. Um, the, the, the slot, I guess you can call it, and in some locations it was actually shorter, so you had like 16, 16 and 18. So I'm thinking that you had possibly narrower parking spaces in some locations and wider, so I, whenever I, I see 16 or 18, mm -hmm. I think like nine right. by 18 or I'm going to guess, the si were they compact parking spaces? No. No? Okay. I'll, so I'll, let, uh, I'll let Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I think I can answer that okay. unless okay. there's further. Okay. Well, all of the spaces on the site are regular spaces of regular size. There's no bigger, smaller, wider. I stand corrected. Uh, I'll bring up well, Kevin from Close Jensen and Miller to answer your question correctly. <laughs> For the record, Kevin Johnson, Close Jensen and Miller. There are some spaces on the east side of mm -hmm. phase one building, I believe, is where they're located, which are 16 feet deep. We did that because we're constricted with the wetlands. And the regulations do allow for a 16 foot space with, with the overhang. But all the other spaces, and they're nine feet wide, and oh, all so the other all spaces the are nine feet. They're all the same width. They're all the same width, oh, nine okay. feet. Mm -hmm. There's no oh, okay. seven foot, nine inch, or whatever it is. And those are the ones right up against the building on the east here? Yeah, on the bottom. Over here? The yeah. Yep. Yeah, because we were constricted with the wetlands. Yeah. Yep. That's why we yep. applied the 16 foot. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Right, should we let the applicant go back to the uh, Yeah, I'll go back to the list. Sure. Uh, I'm on page two, uh, letter C, under the recommended uh, followings. Uh, there's a question about incorporating low impact development. Uh, to uh, run off in the landscape islands to retain the water quality volume. Uh, as I had stated earlier, uh, as part of the inland wetlands process and submission and approval, 
we did add the four oil water separators during the uh, application and approval. Uh, and at the time we met the uh, water quality uh, volume. Uh, also, uh, the current grading at the site uh, is not conducive uh, to allow an effective way to incorporate landscape island collection because of the, the current grading that we're uh, proposing. Um, so I uh, just don't think that it's going to work in this case scenario. But we did, like I said, add the four oil water separators uh, as part of our process uh, after inland wetlands. Um, moving on, set page two, number two. Uh, there's a proposed parking modification plan that we submitted with the uh, parking at our neighbor at 36 Mill Street, the dental lab. <clears throat> um, because of the existing uh, driveway that we're going to make out in the small triangle uh, area that we're going to be using the easement that we have. <clears throat> um, I believe that the area in, in question is at 29 feet, which is above, above the floodplain, uh, and also uh, the proposed area that we were going to repay for them that I showed you on the map that I had last month. Uh, last week or two, uh, I could show you again. That area is currently paved, and we're not changing the grade there at all. We're just repaving it for them so that they have something that's more useful because that area has just been degraded. So we're not raising anything. We're not lowering anything. We're just kind of replacing blacktop with blacktop. Um, so I'm not sure. Wait a minute. You're, you're repaving their parking lot? Who, me? Or yours? Yeah, hi, me. I didn't know it. I wanted to hear him say this. You want, I'll, I'll say it again. Uh, as part of being a good neighbor uh, and trying to, uh, you know, satisfy the neighbor, since we're going to be using an easement that's been on the town records for many, 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 many years, and all of a sudden we're going to come in as the new owner and say we're going to use it now, uh, we try to be good neighbors to everyone around us at every property we own on Southstein Highway. We said that we would repave an area of his parking lot that currently is in rough shape so that he can utilize what he can't utilize today to make up for the four or five spaces that he's going to lose. We're doing that on our dime uh, and as a courtesy and trying to be a responsible neighbor. <clears throat> uh, so uh, part B, 2B, I think, as far as uh, going for any kind of additional approvals or wetland or anything like that, I'm just not sure that we'll have to do that because we're not changing anything in there. Uh, number three. Uh, where it starts to talk about the grading to the handicap spaces. Um, I think CMG, Close Jensen Miller, has addressed this issue in the revised plans. Uh, there was some spot labeling that needed to be put on the plans, and I'm, I'm told that that was done. <coughs> uh, four um, talks about the uh, geotechnical report and some of the, uh, the possibility that groundwater will be present when we dig for the foundation and the... Uh, dewatering operations that may be necessary when we trench for utilities. And for that, I'd like to ask Corey from Close Jensen and Miller, Corey Garrow, to come and say a few words. Uh, Corey Garrow, Close Jensen and Miller. Um, yeah, basically what he's asking for is some kind of detail on the plan that shows you how to settle out the sediments once they start finding uh, groundwater whenever they do trenching or foundation work. And that's, that's really a standard detail that goes into the plans. And depending on the size of the pump or the rate of the pumping is, is how, they, how they built uh, this dewatering area. And they, they pump into it. It's surrounded by either hay bales or silt fence. And then as it builds up, the water will go through and the, se and the, and the sediment will settle out. So, and they, during construction, they'll figure out where the best place to put it is because they don't know what the groundwater is. So it'll be a detail on the plan showing them the standard detail that we will be using. And it's up to the contractors to figure out where to put it on the, on the site. And depending on the size of pumps, they'll figure out the size of this detention area. So, so you work it out on, in, at construction? Site. Yeah. It's, it's and, a cooperative and, uh, effort at that point. The town engineer think that will work? Or you yeah, we'll, we'll, stuff, we'll, put it, we'll, we'll put the generic detail on the plan so yeah. that it addresses that. Thank you. <clears throat> Page two, number five, um, talks about the uh, corrugated metal pipes that run beneath uh, the Puritan Drive entry to the property. 
that allows Gough Brook to pass underneath. Um, as stated before, we did submit the anchor engineering report of those uh, culverts and pipes. Um, and it says on there, as stated in number five, that there's vegetation at the inlets and outlets of the three pipes um, as part of the site process to clean it up and get it ready for construction. All of that vegetation was cut back and removed. Uh, I don't want to say removed, cut back and trimmed. It really needed to be trimmed. Removed would mean we pulled it out of the ground, which we did not do. We, we cleaned it up. But that has already been completed. Um, it goes on to say uh, that the anchor engineering has a uh, removal of a concrete pipe near the outlets. Um, in the report, which we did submit, there's no photo of that concrete pipe. Um, so uh, my... Uh, no, I'm not saying it's not there. I, I didn't go down the mountain to see it myself, honest, and I believe, George, you probably didn't either. So, well, you'd have to go down the mountain. But um, so I think that at this point, uh, with this coming up, you know, today, uh, I'd like to investigate further to make sure that before I agree to remove the pipe, that it doesn't have some function. It seems kind of quite odd that it would be there for no reason. But I'd like to, you know, further the conversation maybe with Anchor Engineering or see if he has photos or uh, just get a little more detail about that. And if it uh, has no um, function or provides no benefit to Gough Brook, um, Phoenix would happily remove it. But you are going to follow his suggestions about trimming around the pipes? And it's all done already. That other report? It's done. It's done? It's all done already. Still, it's all, okay, fine. Yeah. We, we try to do things report, we try to do things the right way um, so yeah all of that is completed the pipes are all wide open it actually in his report it says that one or two pipes were kind of not clogged but sediment in them. there was sediment there because of that but actually uh, I got pictures from my landscaper who did traverse the mountain to go down there that sediment is actually starting to sure. dissipate because now all three pipes are flowing you know yeah. but again the water is low but he said that and yeah I, it, took care of it. We did. Um, and so again, just getting back to that concrete pipe, we're happy to investigate it. And if it serves no purpose and has no function or no benefit to the brook, we would, we would agree to take it out. Um, I just can't comment because I don't want to agree to take it out if it serves some function and then we open up a can of worms. I just don't want to do that. <clears throat> uh, page three, uh, item six, uh, a lot of these are housekeeping. Uh, this is uh, about labeling those same pipes on the map they're labeled incorrectly uh, close jensen and miller will certainly uh, update the plan for that seven label the proposed bar stop at the driveway of mill street cm uh, cjm will constantly will add that to the plan that's not a problem uh, number eight uh, again in the title block uh, i guess we now are going to be known as 1210 and 1218 for building one and two so we definitely will update the plans to uh, accommodate both uh, street addresses um, number nine, <clears throat> resubmit the traffic study, impact study with a seal and signature of the professional engineer. I was told uh, this morning by Mark from Fuss and Nail that that had been hand delivered. Um, so I believe that the town has this, the stamped plan. And 10, um, it says uh, something, uh, the in the wetlands mitigation plans were noted on the cover but were not submitted as the plan set. Um, that'll be, it says, to include that in the final submission, and, and we certainly will. Um, so that concludes my uh, answers to today's memo from the town staff, uh, and we'll certainly open it up to questions or... George? Utility line on the driveway entrance on Silas Dean. We can't do anything about that utility line, getting rid of those poles because <coughs> CLT or whoever the heck they're called now. Stupid. And uh, they, they can't do it. Why? And can't, why can't they bury it or would that be too costly? Sure, no. I certainly will respond to that. I think it came up at the last meeting as well. That air. No, not a problem at all. Happy to just look at it. I said, why can't you bury it? It's kind of certainly. The uh, the telephone poles that are currently on the uh, uh, the in drive on Puritan Drive. Uh, there's uh, 
five of them. Four of them have uh, street lighting uh, that are attached to them. It's an unmetered service that CLMP slash Eversource provides to light the side street. Um, the wires currently are overhead. Um, that bill is paid for by 1260 Silestine Highway. We get billed. Uh, it's an unmetered account, so we just set them out to have those lights there. I'm sorry, I'd forgotten that you had a negotiation yeah, on that. Not a problem. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, they were just trying to get rid of those poles and make things more aesthetic. I sure. No, I fully understand that. Yeah. But uh, you can't do that. Thank you. No problem. All right. Is there any? Uh, Tom. Well, from my perspective, the, the main and, and, and key remaining issue uh, is the amount of uh, the, the issue of the, subs or the surface runoff. <coughs> and uh, I inquired at the last hearing uh, or at the last meeting that uh, as to any investigation of utilizing uh, you know, pervious hard surface uh, technology for handling the, the paving of, of the parking on the site, which would tend to ameliorate a lot of the concern relating to the runoff from, from the parking from the site. Mm -hmm. um, have you done any investigation in, into that uh, technology, uh, the cost thereof as it relates to what you're proposing, uh, the feasibility of it? Um, uh, please please to comment on that. Absolutely, and uh, I did hear that comment, and I did uh, do some investigation and have two uh, points to bring up. The first is, uh, again, with the grading of the site, um, the impervious pavers work best when they're uh, in a level situation so that the water can travel through it and not sheen off of it. And I think, if I have to, I'll deflect to Close Jensen and Miller, but the current grading on the site doesn't allow for an effective uh, any effective area on the property to put impervious pavers. That's uh, one thing that we <coughs> researched. The second is, uh, and I point to the soil scientists that we had during the inland wetlands meeting when this same question came up and impervious pavers were discussed at that meeting. And uh, unfortunately, he's not here tonight, but to paraphrase, because I'm not a soil scientist, but to paraphrase uh, what he had brought up at the inland wetlands meeting, that the current soils on the property are such that the water doesn't drain through it all that well, so that if we did put impervious pavers uh, in any area in the property, the drainage factor that we would get naturally through the impervious pavers into what's below the subsurface is, um, uh, for lack of better words, not a good situation. And I know I'm probably not saying that right, but maybe Corey can help me out a little bit, get a little more technical. Thanks. Too more technical. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, the technical the water won't go away. Um, this, this issue came up during the wetlands uh, review process and, and approval, where the town engineer just had the same comment. And um, based on all the restrictions that we were mentioning, he came up with the idea of why don't we put the roof drains into the subsoil infiltration system. That way you, you're getting an acre and a half, which is considered impervious, way down into the ground. Let it sit there, you know, build up, and, it, and then we have outlet pipes that if it, does, if it doesn't drain, as we all think it's not going to, then it can go out into the system. That was the mitigation that we decided on with the town engineer during the wetland hearing. So I think that issue uh, mitigated what his concern was about the extra paving that we could not get rid of and, and the soil that's not too good that we can't penetrate it. So uh, I thought that issue was resolved during the, in the wetlands and as a matter of fact, in his memo after that, this thing did not come up at all in the second time around when everything was addressed and they approved that application, that comment never surfaced again. But it seems to have surfaced again for this application and I'm not sure why, because we went over this, we all agreed what the solution was, or at least the mitigation, which was this underground detention systems for the roof leaders. Again, that's an acre and a half that we took away from what was just surface flowing. So I thought that was resolved during that period. I'm not sure why it's resurfacing again. And for the same reasons that Mike just described, the soils are not conducive. 
and, this, and the grades are 5%, which is not going to allow the water to just stand there and go into the ground. And for those reasons is why we mitigated it the last time around. So if I'm, if I'm gathering or concluding this correctly, the bottom line is you're saying that you know, the using uh, alternative paving technology is impractical. In, the, uh, on this in, side. in terms of the, uh, a base conclusion. On this and side. And secondly, that uh, uh, the fact that you have now uh, much less uh, roof surface area is now being mitigated further, uh, that that would tend to alleviate a great deal of the, the surface runoff that had previously presented uh, with the previous construction that was on the site. Correct. Uh, if I recall your, your commentary from the past, uh, uh, the past uh, uh, hearing. Right. Correct. I appreciate the answer. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this application? Don't, don't want to wait too long before we ask. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say just one quick thing about the public. I know nobody wants to speak, but after the last meeting and the discussion I had with the public, which was a little off meeting topic there, I did go out to the site. I did meet with several of the neighbors. I did walk the property on my side and on their side of the railroad tracks to make sure that I had a hundred percent clear view of what they're experiencing, what they're seeing from the front yard, from their backyard. Uh, I can't say that I went upstairs in anybody's house and looked, but but I did make the effort to go out and, and meet a few of them and walk the property both sides to make sure that any concerns that I could see that could be fixed or changed. But, um, you know, as stated pretty detailed at the last meeting with the public here, I think that the plan as presented with the trees and the buffer and the 40-foot trees on the interior drive aisle, you know, I think we've, uh, you know, answered most of their concerns and I feel quite strongly that the reason why the public came to the last meeting was again my fault for not enlightening to them to what was going to be the finished product they really had no idea they were in the dark they had no idea if I was building a skyscraper or a you know or a, a you know a, an amusement park so you know I just think that I just wanted to bring that up okay. thanks so so as we move ahead with many of these applications and uh, consider approving such, we often uh, want to resolve the engineers and staff comments, um, leave it up to staff to resolve things, right? And, and yet there are topics that, that Derek has raised that I don't know that we can just do that, right? So let me just characterize it for everybody, right? He's talking, uh, Derek is, is still concerned about the extra spaces and maybe maybe suggesting that a phase three should be incorporated, right? When, when they need the additional parking, build the additional parking. Um, that's one. Uh, it's unclear to me at the moment whether the additional oil separators, so, so help me, uh, oil separators were put in after Derek has asked for better water quality products, right? So that's in, it's in part answering some of his concerns, right? Correct. But it's not doing low impact development techniques, um, and, and that's something that he's raised. Um, what else? <coughs> um, I think that's I think that's the two primary issues he's brought up. Um, do we have any other concerns about traffic operations that the, that we think the DOT is unlikely to take care of? Those are the topics that are running through my head. The trees mentioned by my colleague in the audience there. Uh, you said you couldn't put in coniferous along that far property area, and I, I almost agree with, with you on the people on Middletown Ave. I hate to say this, but I would go out there and look, and I didn't get out and walk it, and I almost feel like I should have today. One last look. But I don't know how much they're affected by your property as far as the, the view or the lighting and all this stuff and, and the need to protect along their property lines. And I don't know, and why didn't you think another green would be, would be good? And coniferous, I don't think, does much in the winter. If you need it, and that's the other point. 
Again, for the record, Kevin Johnson. I, th I think the point I was trying to make at the last meeting was Eversource has got really stringent regulations. We have a pole line, we have a pole line easement. Um, th there's various publications out there. They, they have their list of 30 recommended trees that grow below 30 feet. Well, when you look at other published documents from Eversource, they have a, what they call a wire zone, a periphery zone. We're encumbered basically by the wire zone and it limits, I think it, again, I see different eight feet, 15 feet heights. Certainly they're not going to approve a conifer. Um, there was three conifers in their list of 30 trees, one was an arborvitae. I mean, we know they can grow 20 to 25 feet tall. Uh, there was a certain pine, I forget the name right now. I looked it up. I couldn't find it in any nursery catalog. I'm not saying it couldn't be found, but it's probably difficult. I think that was in the neighborhood of probably has to get 15, California. possibly 15. It might not even be hardy for this region. And they were very columna. So that's the reason I didn't include any conifers. I know if I include pines or hemlocks, spruces, whatever, they'll just come in and cut them down. I mean, I, I could put them on the plan, you could approve it as such, but we know in practical, they're gonna come and cut them down. So that's why I stayed with what I felt, the ornamental trees, the deciduous, is what was approvable and was comparable to what's on their list of 30 recommended trees. And you got two thirds or three quarters of the year, maybe, or two thirds of it anyway. The, the question when you're out there talking to people, mm -hmm. when you start, start talk to several, mm -hmm. Were there, was there any concern with, uh, did you explain the issue of, did they need anything along that property line to uh, keep light out or the car light? Or I, I mean, I, I didn't get that feel. The feel I, I really, and that's why I brought it up a minute ago. <clears throat> the feel I got is, is that I, I think that I inadvertently, and certainly the hindsight is twenty twenty. I think I inadvertently, as I had said, I spoke to the dental lab, I spoke to the printing lab on the other side. I, I think at the beginning of this and before we started demoing, I probably should have at, at a minimum put a leaflet in, you know, on their front door and introduced myself so that I could have talked to them and at least let them know that we weren't replacing you know, the ugly building and woods with a, with a carnival atmosphere. And I, I, I apologize to the people that were here. And um, you know, I think it was really more of their lack of understanding of what was happening. They really had no idea what I was building. And I think even the gentleman that, you know, questioned twice about the trees on the island being 40 feet, I think at the end of the meeting, uh, I spoke to several of them outside in the parking lot. And I, I, I think that um, they understood it. And I think uh, a testament to that is none of them came tonight to, to speak again or to make sure that I did what I said I was going to do or that you would approve what I said I was going to do. I think that's why the public's not here tonight. Oh, I'm so sorry. You just didn't want to speak. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, that printing company, I went down there again today and walked and looked at lot, and I don't think they care at all about anything <laughs> around them or in the back. I went around the back with them. Yeah. No, they I don't think so either. Less about that's, I would, I'm, I'm going to have to put myself in their place, but I'd say by the way they treat their property down there. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Any other questions for the applicant? Lisa? My, my, my question was really around the, the, the traffic assumption about half going out Mill Street, half going out onto the Silestine. I, as a resident, would be very excited to use the Mill Street exit because I know it's impossible to take a left turn over here. How are you going to make sure that that happens that people know of this other entrance or exit <coughs> well I think uh, uh, before I bring Mark up for any more technical information I think that generally speaking as I had said earlier uh, the 1260 building has some uh, 150 employees so those people for sure coming to the building every day are going to know it's there uh, other people and patients that come you know they're coming to see their doctor which means they're going to come multiple times um, so maybe on the first trip they won't, but when they get into the lot for the, even the first time and they get out of their car and they look and they're going to see, instead of seeing woods and a dirt path, they're going to see a beautiful tree lined, very defined street that leads to Mill Street. I think that just 
common sense is going to lead them to believe hey this leads to mill street i can try and see what happens and i suspect that the people that were that were concerned about going down puritan drive and making that left crossing two lanes of traffic that a good part of them or maybe fifty percent of the traffic will tend to go to mill street where they can take that left more easy and hit the light to get the silestein highway i know that i would do that and i think that common sense when people come to the parking lot for their doctor multiple times i think it, they'll figure that out i don't think that there's going to be any it's not it's not hidden in any way it'll be obvious yeah, yeah. that's yeah that's a good way to put it sorry <laughs> is there some internal signing that probably directs them as well i think that there's the you know that maybe the possibility of maybe some uh, you know maybe i don't think there's going to be really any signing that says like exit i, I just think it's going to be obvious okay. so um i think there's somebody from the public who wishes to speak I'll give you the opportunity again. Please join us. Hi, good evening. Christine Jackamy, 417 Middletown Avenue. I don't have anything prepared today, but I do have, um, I, I wish you had spoken to me. I wish I was outside or if you had come to my door now, uh, because I would have loved to have spoken to you at that point to go back there and to look to see how everything is. One, um, obviously we know traffic is gonna be a major change. That's gonna be a big issue. And um, the topics that I brought up last time about missing the woods and how it buffered everything from Silas Dean, that's, it's a done deal. Nothing can be done about that. Um, but I do have questions about the lighting. Um, as you mentioned lighting a few minutes ago, is the lighting going to be directed towards the building so that it's not something that's going to be in our eyes the entire time? Is it going to be, um, how is that going to be? No, all of the lighting is going to be approved, full, what's called full cutoff lighting. <coughs> yeah, I was say full cutoff lighting shines just directly down in the parking lot. Okay. Nothing shines left to right. Okay, so we won't see it like blaring in our yards. That's no. all it's allowed in. Okay. Okay. And um and I listened to what was being said about the pine trees, but those really are like the most effective, the evergreens because that's not it's not going to lose its leaves come winter time. So once fall starts with the leaves falling, everything's exposed again. So if there is any way that you can get something like that in there, that would be really appreciated. And again, the taller the trees the better. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Is, I'm having a hard time seeing anybody out there. Is there anybody else who, <laughs> who wants to speak? All right. So, uh, you know, before we take any specific action on the hearing itself, um, I guess I'm looking for some feedback on thoughts on how we might approach the disconnect that remains between the town engineer's thoughts and whether you're comfortable with I don't want to say dismissing them, but putting those to the side and, and you know, <coughs> moving on without it. Mr. Chairman, I think we've done a good job here discussing it tonight. The, the items are still outstanding. The only other one I wanted to have them talk, one more thing, minor, I think. Uh, the sidewalk issue. Now, you're painting a lot of them, or you're, you actually have paved ones, and I should have looked carefully at your plan to see where the hell they were, but I, you know, hey. Once you just quickly express where they are. I think parking lots in major areas like uh, shopping centers are not adequate from the old days. And I think it was a mistake back then. You know, I even sat on this commission probably. We should have put some in other than next to the building because mm -hmm. you're walking through traffic all the time. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, are you... So could you could you answer his, answer his question? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. So the the answer to that question, as brought up before, is that we're we're going to be utilizing the um, the sidewalks, <coughs> the current sidewalks on Silasteen uh, on the Puritan Drive coming from Silasteen Highway. And we're going to be extending them down, and I'm going to go here and just talk a little louder. I, I mean, in in your site. Yeah, no. Uh, we're going to bring the sidewalk down here, down Puritan Road to the site, and then from the site, and I think it's marked on that plan. In here internally, we are going to have the striped cross hatch or the striped walkway to get traffic to the building, both buildings from the sidewalk. 
and, and then the same on the outgoings. The sidewalk is going to start here, going down the Mill Street entrance all the way to Mill Street that connects to the current sidewalk. I think what you may be referring to inside there, yeah, in the center yeah, of the all of the, all the parking in here has to be, you can't have a, a raised sidewalk, obviously, in the middle of the parking space. That's right, you did say yeah, that. Yeah, you can't have that. And um, so that, and you know, we have it currently at 1260. We have interior striping that leads to people that park at here, and then we have people that park over here, but then we, <coughs> we have the same striping on the uh, pavement to direct people. But you will have adequate, uh, you know, striping around even around the back for kids and employees who want to walk around during lunch hours and stuff, that kind of thing? Well, I, you know. I, I but they'll walk the main road where the striped well, side is. Are you calling the main roads anything inside of the street? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, that is going to have striping to lead people to both buildings, correct. Okay. So you, you think it should be adequate in that sense? I think well, that I, I trust Coach Hinton enough that, that, that they provided a, you know, comprehensive plan to get traffic flow, foot traffic, you know, to and from the property. I, I feel confident in that. That, that I'm sure, is part of the reason. I was thinking more internally and from the cars and so that kind of thing. Well, know. there'll be, you know, where there's handicap spacing, you know, there'll because be. Because I don't think 1860 is very wonderful as far as getting through that small parking lot because it's so congested all the time. Mm -hmm. And you don't have, you know, I mean, some there, but there really isn't really that adequate. I know that's old and this is different. I want to be sure you're up to speed on it. Uh, we believe we are. Okay, I hope so. Good. Okay. Is there a sidewalk connection between the two buildings? Uh, I mean, you're walking out of one building to the other. Is there? Uh, I think that was a question that yeah. was uh, I answered say last week. The answer to that is no. There's no actual striping from building one to building two. And the reason that I'm going to give for that is that this building is going to be occupied by the subscript space tenant A, and this building might be occupied because it's two stories by tenants B and C. And the chances that somebody from building one or two is going to walk between the two buildings is probably slim. The reason I say that is building two is a facility to uh, assist building A, okay, in, in that sense. It's a daycare. No, 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 no. The daycare is located oh, in building one. Building. Okay. And it's only for those tenants. And it's only it's for the tenants tenant. that occupy building one. So there'll be nobody really walking from building two to building one. This building is set up to be totally separate tenants. Okay. You know, separate from this. They won't utilize the daycare. This building is not the daycare. That's the very clear. So it's just for employees in both buildings getting together or something at noontime is really minimal. I would okay. say so. I okay. understand. Thank you. No problem. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, going back to the topic I raised before, it, it's not like we have to discuss it in any, at any length. I just want to have the, everybody contemplate whether there are things that the town engineer has raised that, you know, you're still concerned about. Okay. So, so with that, um, Assuming there's nobody else in the public, do you have more comments, questions of the applicant? In the absence of uh, any further public comments, I'll move to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. All right. <coughs> Discussion, motion. Um, does the uh, uh, town planner think that the engineering issues are all right? I, I would oh, can be uh, certainly can be so I, th I think as Tom summarized assuming you're satisfied with the uh, overall amount of parking assuming you're satisfied with the proposed drainage scheme that was presented and um, I mean in the, and the traffic uh, related you comment the answer to the, uh, the, the uh, Materials along the brook and so forth, and near the pipe. He, I thought he answered. Yeah, those are those are uh, manageable uh, questions and can be worked out right. with staff. Okay. So, so the three issues being the parking, the drainage, and the traffic. If you are uh, okay with the um, responses um, made tonight and at the last meeting, and you don't want to see anything changed, I think the rest of the issues 
uh, can be worked out with staff. So there was. Is that drainage with uh, Derek? No, I'm saying assuming you're okay with. Yeah, the yellow. Yeah. So Derek's can, position. Probably work that out. Derek's position is is more substantial than. Yeah, it is. But but that decision is yours, not necessarily his. So if you're okay. Um, with the answers you've received tonight. And this conversation was held, the same conversation was held at the wetlands meeting because those comments were made at that point in time. And, and it's no drainage requirement. So, um, you know, he's gonna struggle with that. I mean, if continuously going forward um, and it's almost impossible battle to fight. He's never gonna be able to balance off the amount of coverage that goes on in the community over the years with, you know, removing it somewhere else. So but this is a part of it. So, so I think um, at, at, a, at, at another point in time, not now, we need to have that conversation with him uh, and what our regulations maybe need to be changed to provide that guidance and as a policy discuss that. By him you mean Derek. Derek and this commission, um, not by him meaning the applicants tonight. So no, no, definitely going forward would be a conversation with him, you know, whether we have a workshop or whatever it might be to, to kind of uh, discuss those issues going forward so we're all on the same page and you know you, he doesn't have his position versus what you guys vote to do and so um <coughs> excuse me a question can i ask along that line have you seen and it's so new a lot of it have you seen any towns getting zinged because they're not meeting that requirement by the, by the deep uh not not yet i haven't seen that any, but i don't i don't have that exposure to other communities so uh, i think uh derek's I, I think well, I mean, people are just now turning in their reports. Right, oh, okay. it's an annual thing, and I, th and I think Derek. Um, it's too low for everybody. Yeah, Derek raised the issue because that is his job to raise that issue, and he's managing that particular program. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this commission, with his <coughs> input, makes that those helps. those decisions. So, yeah. um, you know, that's that's just the way it is. And you know, you you know, speaking for Derek, you don't win all the the battles all the time because you know there's usually a reason why um, certain things are proposed and, and you heard from the applicant as to why. So I think Derek wanted to hear uh, that rationale on the record so that if he ever is called to the table by DEEP or somebody else, there's a documented conversation about it and an answer as to why it couldn't be done in certain cases and, and maybe in other cases it will be done. So um, uh, we'll have those conversations as we go forward. So uh, in summary, I think all the other issues uh, can be worked out with staff. So there was a January 22nd uh, memo from Close Jensen and Miller which addressed uh, all of the comments made by planning staff, by the fire marshal, and by the uh, first set of comments from the engineer. So I think as long as those are uh, referenced um, uh, in, in the motion to approve it, that staff can address those issues and make sure all of the comments and commitments that were made in the memos and on the record are factored into the revised plans. Uh, I'm okay with that. And then on top of that, you had this other memo today from the town engineer, uh, which there's still a few little odds and ends that need to be worked out, uh, excluding the comments about the parking and about the drainage. Um, I think all of those other comments are uh, manageable. And I just, one last thing, I, I didn't comment on it when it was being made, but um, you were talking about the landscaping underneath the power lines. Mm -hmm. uh, the power company came through actually this past year and decimated a bunch of um, uh, evergreens <coughs> that had been planted underneath. So uh, they are going to do that um, because they uh, were either poorly selected or it's been you know, 20 years since they came through. I, so I saw trees down here near the printing plant that were down. I thought it was a railroad right there. No, the power company came through power and um, the railroad, did, did railroad did some too, but the power company came through um, in a whole bunch of spots and we, we received a whole bunch of uh, complaints about that, but we had to explain to them that, you know, they have their rights to maintain under their power line. So um, that just supports the, the answers that were heard before. So I think if you uh, make a motion to approve it, subject to working out all the, uh, uh, staff issues that are technical in nature se separate from the parking and the drainage then uh, s staff would be happy with uh, with with those conditions and working those out with the applicant I have one one thing though I want my recollection from from the last hearing we, we reviewed the traffic study and there were two recommendations of their expert uh, I just want to be sure that those uh, 
uh, built into any approvals that we would give that those would be taken care of. Those were commented on by staff and responded to by the applicant um, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll make sure get incorporated. Make a motion we approve application 2029-19Z um, on the condition that all of the items contained in the January 22nd letter from Close Jensen and Miller to Peter Gillespie be um, addressed. Um, also that in the February 4th memo, memo from Derek Greger to Peter Gillespie, um, Item 2A, uh, identify the proposed surface material for the additional parking spaces in 36 Mill Street. 2B, written documentation from the owner of 36 Mill Street indicating that they're aware of um, impacts to their on-site parking and that, that it may require permit approvals. Uh, three, notes on the plans, con confirm the notes on the plans to indicate the Grades near the proposed handicap, handicap spaces are maximum 2%. Um, item four, uh, to identify on the plans generic dewatering operations uh, with the specifics to be determined um, in the field. Uh, item five, uh, with the change that the uh, applicant investigate the concrete pipe uh, and remove it if it serves no function. Items, pipe, yeah. Yeah. Items six, seven, eight, and nine uh, to be uh, shown on the plans. And number 10, that the wetland mitigation plans be included in the final submission. Thank you very much, Rich. I'll second yeah. that. Thank you, Tom. I, I guess okay. bef before, you know, and I'll, I'll ask if you're, you're willing to second it, I, I would also add that um, a request that the applicant uh, revisit whether there's any way to incorporate low, in com low impact development features uh, into the landscaped islands to uh, potentially reduce or at least prevent an increase in um, you know, downstream water impacts. I'll, I'll agree to that. Okay, thank you both for that. Um, and again, full parking, no phase construct, no phase construction of the parking is be being proposed. Obviously, except for the X number that are under the second building, right? Those yeah. won't. Two phases. Right. Um, any discussion on the motion, Rich, just put forward? Uh, just one, one thing. I would recommend to the applicant, it's, it's a recommendation yeah. primarily, uh, that in response to the um, uh, February 4th memorandum that, that has created a lot of issues, that, uh, you, that the applicant respond to the February 4th uh, engineer's memorandum in a similar manner to which they responded on in their uh, January 22nd uh, letter to the uh, town planner that illustrates their commitment to uh, the adherence to these and the follow through with the various conditions that have been outlined in the motion and, and also w uh, conformity with your, the testimony that you provided tonight. I think that'd be helpful for the record and uh, help us to move forward and, and also helpful to the engineer, town engineer and, and his work to deal with these issues. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Don't we have a voting app that we can use? <laughs> <laughs> Not one that works. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get into Murphy's Law issues. <laughs> Good luck. When are you going to start building? 45 days. When? 45 days. 45? Good for you. Mid-March. Right. Thank you.
when you're going to be assessed and pay taxes. <laughs> we never asked you what you're going to pay in taxes or what your value of the building time is. We're not supposed to ask you. One of my kind colleagues of is an expert in that area is going to ask him. You're killing right. the no buzz, idea, George. All right, shall we move on to the... Uh, I pay tax on that. I pay. We pay. <laughs> no, you don't. Sure you do. We pay. You can't afford not to. That's you right. got too much at stake. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you. I will see you after this. Well, I'll let him see what it is. And there you are. Go ahead. <laughs> Moving on to item 3-2. Uh, application 2032-19-Z, Chuck with B. Seeking a special permit for home occupation dog daycare at 249 Main Street. This one also is continued from January 1st. Right. <coughs> Let the record note that uh, Rich has recused himself from this application as he did last time. Welcome back. Hello again. <coughs> I'm Tucker Lee and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Marcy Berman. <coughs> Since last time we spent almost two hours speaking two weeks ago, I'm going to avoid repeating too much information for the sake of time. Um, I've submitted the outline for our approved fence uh, that was approved by the HDC. It's meant for our dogs. It's meant to let dogs um, have bathroom time and some time outdoors in addition to walks. It's not meant to spend any significant time outdoors and it's going to be cleaned daily. Um, we are also no longer asking to uh, request uh, the ability to groom. Um, and I would like to clarify and emphasize some points. Uh, the first floor of our property is commercial. This is not the area of discussion. Uh, the second floor is our home that we purchased to live in, and that is where we are caring for the dogs. Um, House Bill 5799, Public Act 1323, which allows for families like ours to care for three dogs in our home without a kennel license is meant to protect us from being considered on the same level as an official business operation because there is no comparison. We have a handful of dogs spending time with us in our home as opposed to a warehouse filled with 50 to 60 dogs at a time. As my father-in-law lovingly noted, we are over-educated pooper scoopers. I have, listed, I have listened to the arguments and read the letters, and I must say that these concerns are rooted in misunderstandings at best and a desire for overreaching control at worst. How are we not supposed to take things personally when this is an argument on what we can and cannot do within our home? As it has been emphasized before, this is not a standard business. This is about the relationships we built that allow us to open our home to other pet parents who need their dogs to be in a home care situation similar to their own. Again, Connecticut state law protects this, and the Department of Agriculture has not heard of a town requiring any sort of zoning request for this sort of situation before. Our home is far enough so that noise isn't an issue to other residents. Main Street has much louder sounds that include the boat horns from the cove, the brakes from the tractor trailers, to the sound of children playing and their parents calling for them. We still have our own dogs. The fence will still be built because it is for my dogs, and no amount of letters or concern will change that there is life in my home. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. So uh, we are, or the town is in receipt of a number of pieces of correspondence uh, that came in since the last meeting. Um, I'll quickly go through them. I think I'm going to get this right. One from Andrea Ladd. What was the date of the last meeting? The 22nd, right? 22nd of Wednesday. So I have one from uh, Andrea Ladd, dated the 23rd. Um, and it is opposed. Uh, I mean, the it goes on with a number of things, but it's it's a, it's opposed. Uh, just suggesting that there are other things that are already detrimental to the neighborhood, and this would just kind of be one more thing. There's another one from Linda Pin, which actually dated the same day as the hearing. I don't remember it though. Um, I have concerns. It's not a good fit for the neighborhood. That is from Linda Pin from 223 Main Street. Another one from a Jen Pliss on Harford Avenue, uh, and this is sug suggesting that it should be approved. A Karen Tabshay, 249 Main Street. 
not be compatible with future development of this area. So that's from Main Street. Gina Rinaldi, again on the 22nd, uh, I'm writing this letter on behalf of, so in support of the watching dogs at a residence and that individual resident, uh, I, don't, I don't see that they're a resident. I don't see an address on it. Mike Duty. These were all written in last time? All of these that I just said? These are the new ones? Thank you. So one dated today, the February 4th. Living at 29 Hartford Avenue, Maureen Hayes. Our concerns are congestion, noise, logistics. So clearly opposed to the application. Uh, another one from Roger Tabshay, but it is a new one. Uh, strongly opposed, obviously, continuing on that vein. Um, another one, I gotta get to the end here, Mitch and Duty Knight from 307 Main Street. Our opinion, it is not something that belongs in the heart of historic Weathersfield. Quiet. Seems like quiet and just appropriateness for the neighborhood. And Jama Colgrove, personal uh, writing to voice personal objections to the proposed doggy care. That uh, I am not seeing an address on it. All right. So, so you're suggesting? Oh, this this is a new one as well. February fourth from Carol Zeminski, which uh, I know there was another letter last time. This, uh, this proposal fails to meet several requirements for the home occupation. Uh, you know, and I, I, I think these are appropriate to read, right? So this cannot be operated entirely within the confines of the dwelling, and you guys probably remember the rules that are home occupation, right? Uh, it, number four, it's unclear if the applicants can meet the requirements for adequate off-street parking. Um, She's suggesting that this home occupation could become a health or safety hazard and noise nuisance. All right, so that's it. Is there, are there any questions for the applicant before I ask if there are more people here who wish to speak on the, on the matter? I guess I, guess I just had one question. Uh, were you, do you self-impose like a size restriction? Because I know there's like the small and medium and through the, through the app, um, do you guys, like set that yourself, like you wouldn't take like a dog that's like 150 pounds? Yeah, at, at this current moment, we, d we do not accept dogs over 100 pounds. Okay. All right. And, and I also took notes uh, to remind myself two weeks. Yeah. Well, it was one of the topics, right? Um, and, and there were no restrictions on it, but we did hear that they do have those categories, right? Um, last time around, we didn't know about the fence or material. I guess we have that proposal before us now. Um, the other thought was, how do we control, honestly, you know, the checks, how do we check on the fact that there's only three there, right? That kind of thing. Um, you know, we've all been done, heard about lucky clues and how do we control it from here, right? How do we control, how does the zoning enforcement officer control the fact that there's really only three there? Um, and how do we control how many the applicant has themselves? When they have five, is it okay to have eight in the house, right? That kind of a thing. Um, So I, I, one of the things that went through my mind is whether this, like other applications, might be appropriate for time constraint. Uh, there's not a lot of upfront costs. It's not like you know millions are being spent to develop a piece of property, where you know a, a time constraint and, and coming back and proving that they've done they've been a good neighborhood or na good neighbor, you know, after a period of time uh, that may be appropriate for this type of a application. Is there anybody from the Public who wishes to speak on this? Come on up. Sure, you. Uh, uh, Billy Logan, 318 Hartford Avenue. Um, back when you set up the Village Business, uh, you were very foresight. You had great foresight to exclude veterinary hospitals and kennels. 
So I don't even know why we are hearing this application tonight or two weeks ago. Um, this is being uh, uh, the definition of a kennel by the zoning regulations is a site or structure used for the keeping of animals for compensation. Now, I am sure these people are being paid. Therefore, this is a kennel. This is not a dog walking service. This is a kennel. And you do not allow kennels in the village business district. Am I correct? So I, I, I think I know how to respond, but I'm going to let Peter do it I'll, 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 uh, by right, right? <laughs> so you do not allow kennels as the uh, principal permitted use. Right. Um, you do not, uh, so on the contra flip side of that, your home occupation regulations do not list all of the home occupation types that, that are permitted. So this is being applied under a home occupation, uh, the principal use at this point being the residence of the property. So uh, it is something you can consider. It's not the principal uh, use of the property. So that's the distinction um, that you're looking at tonight. So appreci I appreciate that. So did, did you understand the distinction that was being made? I, I know what you're saying. It's not <laughs> quite that clear. That's, that's what you're hearing. But it is one of the things. I mean, there are so few things that are d denied in the village business in the historic district. Uh, and this is one of them. It's a kennel. They, the dogs will be there. They will be in the side yard. Um, will they be licensed? Will they be vaccinated? Who is going to check on that? Um, will they have rabies shots? I mean, I love dogs. I have Great Danes, and I have fostered many dogs. But I, I don't own a kennel. I don't run a kennel. I don't t charge when I foster a dog. Um, I, I just think it's unfair. It does not belong in the district. It does not belong next to heirloom market where dogs are not allowed in the building, but there are dogs outside. It, it, it just is wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Need to be sorry. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. My name is Spiro Kalor, 67 Hartford Ave, and also owner operator of Heirloom Market. <clears throat> I don't like talking in front of people, so <laughs> I can't stand it. So um, we don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to start off. Um, just I felt a responsibility to come up and say something because we've been kind of hearing it from all sides. And just first and foremost, like we're not necessarily in opposition to uh, the proposed business but we do have questions and some concerns. We've had a conversation uh, with Tucker and Marcy. They were great, they came over, kind of gave us the lowdown and everything that was going on. And, um, but it just felt a responsibility, just as a basic liability, just kind of put on record what our concerns were, and it's basically what we spoke about. So um, really, you know, I just think that it's really not that simple to say you're either opposed or for it, because there is just a number of, there's just so many variables. Obviously, you know, taking on the project, putting all that money into the, the property to kind of open up their business, it, you know, that demands a lot of respect. And it's a hard thing to do, we're doing it, and it's brutal. But at the end, it's worth it. So I sympathize with their plans to do it. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have questions and concerns. Um, the first thing is, is that noise has not been an issue. We haven't had any issue with noise. Um, as far as, I'm only speaking for myself. Um, our big issues and our questions are really the exterior of the building. We know that they've made amazing progress in the inside of the building and it's very expensive. 
but we just want to know and hear about what the plans are specifically to take care of the exterior. Some of the, um, the projects are, are half done. We sympathize why they're half done, but just we just want to know what the plans are, what the timeline is for some of those things, um, because it does, it does affect us uh, directly. Um, they, were, they were kind enough to let us in on the plans for where the fence was going to go. Um, a lot of this you've heard before, my only concern is a basic business liability concern, is that when the dogs are outside, even if it's personal or dogs that you're watching, there's going to be somebody there, but if a dog is larger and it can get over the three and a half foot fence, a lot of times we'll have people on the patio that have dogs. Now we have them, we have a policy where you can't leave your dog by yourself. It has to be on leash, it can't be tied up against something while somebody goes in and grabs the soda or something. So the, somebody has to be with the dog at all times. So just again, hear specific plans for how that will be taken care of. Um, the last thing we want is for a dog, dogs get out of fences, you know, and it's a concern. Again, basic business liability concern. We wouldn't want, you know, any kids or any dogs to cause commotion out there. Um, I'm not really concerned with the, uh, like I said, the noise, I think that it's their house. I think they're going to clean up after themselves. But again, the liability issues. Um, one thing with the exterior of the building is even we got to a point where, you know, people came and approached us when we got to a point where it kind of got away from us. The exterior of our, our property got away from us. And we had no choice but to hire professionals to take care of it. Um, just owning a business, you get to that point where you just can't do it by yourself. Um, so we'd want to hear what the plan is for that taking on additional kind of exterior challenges, making the pen and having the dogs out there. What's the plan for keeping it clean? What's the plan for maintaining the rest of the property? Um, another thing that we wanted to kind of bring up, and this is more of a question for the board, is the past approvals, especially with the, the parking lots and things like that. Again, as the business owner that's in the same lot, we're just really interested in timelines. So is there a timeline when that, when the, the parking lot will be completed? Is it something that um, is even still realistic? The reason why I ask that question is because there's a certain portion of that land that we have set aside for the easement. And if it's going to be a couple years, then we just want to know what the timeline is because that land is just basically roped off and kind of not being used and there could be something happening there. People could be sitting out there in picnic tables, but we don't want to disturb it until we find out exactly what the plan is with that area. Um, so, is it going to that? let's see here. You know, and then I, you know, with the exterior, like, is there is there are there options for a temporary solution to having to have the cars parked along the walkway? Okay, and you might say, okay, what does this have to do with the with what we're proposing for the dogs? I think it's all kind of together because these are past things that were supposed to be finished and we're moving on to something new. So I just want to know what happens to the old things that were approved. Um, and I think that ultimately all these things, if we're very specific with them and we're very clear about the timing of them, ultimately it's going to lead to a very successful business for you all and it's going to be clear of what it's going to manage everyone's expectations. Um, and it's not. It does, these things don't come from any kind of emotion or personal, but it's just managing expectations of what you think what should happen, managing expectations of what the township thinks should happen, what the neighborhood thinks should happen. Um, and then uh, basically, let's see here, it's a parking lot. I think that's really anything that I'm gonna, that I would say is really just kind of like the basic, th basic things that I talked to you about. Um, but. See if I have anything left in my notes that's kind of out there. Um, and then just basically just the issue of compliance. So, you know, with our business, we have a food service business and we're inspected four times a year by the health department. Among other things, we have to make sure that we have licenses and stuff like this. So what they're asking is not a kennel. And I completely agree it's not a kennel. But I think that just for the sake of managing expectations and not having it be something where the neighborhood has to take on the responsibility of compliance. 
I just want to know if there's a plan in place for that. Um, other than that, what I speak for myself and my wife Julia is that I think it's in everyone's best interest that they're set on a path for success. Um, but these are the concerns and the questions that we have moving forward. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any concern with the food issue and dogs moving nearby in any way? No, not at all. It's just the, the biggest thing is that we just can't allow dogs inside of our building just for health code because we're serving food. But um, dogs outside on the patio are not an issue as long as, like I said, they can't be allowed to walk freely and they also can't be like tied to a railing while somebody leaves them alone. Plans on that, but no, not at all. Could be out there. Not at all. Our, our only concern with the dogs being outside is everything that, er, that everyone said and they 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 I'm not as concerned as a lot of people because we had the conversation but just from a, just when I'm sitting up here on record from basic liability issue my concern would be is if a dog got over the fence is the fence tall enough can the fence be taller do you think it is what they're proposing um, well I, I've had dogs for like 30 years and sometimes more than one at a time um, but I don't know dogs dogs can jump over things but I just think that just but then it doesn't mean that it's going to happen but just it's a matter of everyone agreeing on what so you, would you suggest that maybe they take them on a leash even when they're out in a fenced area or perhaps I don't know if I would I don't know if I would um, request anything specific I just would want to hear the specific plan you know what is what is what are the what are the, what are the specific policies that are going to be put in place just as like a, a budding business that's all I have a question Please. as well, and um, you mentioned several times about you know to have a successful business, and you wish your neighbor to have a successful Please, yeah, business. Absolutely. So, w just to make sure I understand what business means, um, are we talking about the um, the business of of having the additional three dogs? So they already have two, and is, are you talking about that business? Because we've also spoken about other businesses sure, before. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Office business and I guess that's know. that's kind of what the one of the main reasons why I decided to come up and speak today um, is that I don't I don't think I think a lot of times when one business comes up and speaks to an, about another business I think a lot of it is based on fear of competition and things like weird things like that okay. I think that coming up and speaking about this particular situation is because we share the same piece of property okay and if if a dog were to get out and there were people on our property that have a dog it's going to go one one place. But just, again, I think it's something that can be resolved, but just want to hear what specifically, what things we put in place to avoid that. Now, when we're talking about businesses, um, I would like to hear the plan for the past business, if it's mm -hmm. still going to happen, mm -hmm. if it's not going to happen, and if this is a means to get you to that. I think that it's been spoken about, we spoke about it briefly, but I think I'd like to hear a little bit more detail about that, about a specific plan to get you to your goal of either getting Vincent Swag open or doing something different. Maybe there's options where you're not required to have such a large parking lot so it's not so much of a financial burden. Maybe, you know, if there's other options that the town is working with them to help them kind of get around this thing. But um, again, the only reason why I'm up here is because we are sharing, literally sharing the same piece of property. And it does, it does affect us directly because there really is a, a decent portion of our land that's being set aside for the easement. Um, so knowing the timeline and knowing the specifics of the business and that parking lot matters very much to us. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, more, it's not so much a question of should it be a dog watch place, it should be what, what is the plan with that stuff moving forward. So, okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Hi there, my name is Madeline Hughes. I'm a resident of Hartford, but I'm a friend of the Berman Lee family and they asked me to be here to support them today. So I wanted specifically to speak to the comments that Tucker uh, referenced the bill um, that allows them to set three or fewer dogs. So to begin, um, my dogs are 12 and 17 pounds. 
but um, the vet tells me that the 17 pounder should be closer to 15 pounds, so we're working on that. Uh, Tucker and Marcy were the very, were the first friendly people my husband and I met when we moved to Connecticut. We bonded over our love of dogs and they recommended our vet to us and we met up for puppy play dates and texted each other goofy pictures of our pets. These, they're my friends. And just like I would pay a friend who was babysitting or watching my house or taking care of my garden, I would like to pay them for their time when they watch my dogs while I'm away. I, I want to do that specifically because my, they're my friends, not because they're a kennel. Like I'm, a, I'm a millennial dog mom. I don't want to put, bring my dogs to a kennel while they're like my babies, and I would like to have them um, watched by my friends. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Paul Brady, 1618 Church Street. By the way, I would like to first thank you guys for listening to me rant the last time I was here. Um, not going to do that tonight. Um, my concern is more of if you approve this, then you are setting some form of precedence. Because after all, looking at Article 5 of the uh, Business Zone and Use Purposes 5.1, uh, this type of business does not it's it, it's not for that area. So, you know, and I understand uh, Peter just said it's under occupational, um, for an occupational um, business, and it's not the primary use, but the state passed this law, a piece of legislation, and this is the thing with, um, you know, federal legislations, state legislations, they're umbrellas. They don't really speak specific to, you know, what how you know local law and, you know, how things are going to affect the community. Because after all, the state's job is to try and please everyone in Connecticut. So just pass a basic umbrella bill and let the towns fight over how to deal with it. My question, and I I mentioned this while I was ranting the last time, that I think the town board needs to pick this up and put some type of, you know, there needs to be some stipulations here. Because, you know, you know, let's play devil's advocate here for two seconds. If for some, if for some reason I decided, well, I want to start a business, but I want to do a marijuana business. I'm going to do it in my backyard. I got Comstack Ferry next to me, and, you know, my neighbor on one side and the other. And my trees are going to grow 20 foot tall. Um, yeah. I presume that there's going to be a big uproar in the community about that. You can also see the, the domino effect of what would happen if everyone um, that moved into Old Weathersfield decided, well, I'm going to get three dogs. There's, there's no restrictions on the size in the state legislation of what you can get. So there are, there are some things that need to be, you know, they need to be fixed and looked at a little bit better. But uh, again... That's really my concern, um, you know. I, I, I don't think that it is in the best interest of the community for you guys to, um, you know, approve this at this time because it's, it's not. It, 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 it is not within, um, it is not within regulations of, the, of town code for that piece of property for that type of business to be there. So that's pretty much all I have to say, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Anybody else? All right. If the applicant wants to come back and join us, additional questions for the applicant? Um, obviously, we heard from the next door neighbor, and, and uh, the same thoughts were going through my mind about the previous stuff. Can you status what else is going on based on your <coughs> other? Other approvals today? Uh, sure. Um, even though I thought this is completely separate, um, we are still attempting to put in the parking lot. Uh, as I mentioned before, we had delays because we were waiting on uh, final approvals on the Mylars. Um, <clears throat> as for where our cars are parked, that's where the realtor had told us we were allowed to park per the easement. 
um, before there was ever talk of a, a uh, parking lot. Um, the issue with the size of the fence, this was what was approved by the um, HDC, and uh, I forgot to mention that any dogs that are larger and capable of jumping over the fence will still remain on leash to avoid any sort of risk. Um, we mostly watch small dogs regardless. Um, it, it is a separate topic, the other approvals, but um, I mean, this, this commission has the right to ask, and I, I was wondering myself. Mm -hmm. So is there a timeline for we completion were, of them? Well, we were actually hoping to start as of last year. Um, uh, however, the delays have made it difficult. Now we're waiting on the weather, um, on whether or not we continue. And hang on one second. And honestly, based on the receiving of this neighborhood, we are considering whether or not we're staying in town. Okay. Tom? Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, number one, uh, I presume you have insurance for your property? Yes. Uh, what is the extent of your liability insurance uh, and do you have an uh, excess liability insurance coverage? Uh, we have a standard uh, home insurance policy and the a Rover actually uh, gives us protection for whatever happens with the dogs in addition to our homeowner's policy. And what is the limits of uh, liability? Uh, I'll have, I can actually um, look that up and send the information to you afterwards. Okay, I would, I'd be much more comfortable if you had like excess coverage say of, uh, uh, you know, in, in addition to what your standard coverage would be, if you had a rider that had excess liability coverage of up to a million dollars, that's not too, that's not a, uh, very expensive. I've got that kind of <coughs> rider on my own uh, residence and uh, it'd be, you know, it's very helpful as it relates to all kinds of potential liability issues for property owners. So. Um, Secondly, um, it relates to the other, uh, uh, you know, uh, the prior approvals that, ha that had conditions attached to them. Uh, you're aware that we could probably attach, uh, uh, you know, conditions to any approval for this um, to include those other prior approvals with a time deadline on that, and would that be acceptable to you? Uh, I'm confused. Are you saying that in order for this to be accepted, you might attach things from the commercial request that we've made? Since it deals with the same property, uh, I, w I would tend to think so. Okay, I'm uh, a little surprised by that because there's this is about our residential uh, and our home versus the business that we're trying to establish downstairs. I know, but they're, they're essentially at the same locus, so, you know, the same site. One's upstairs and one's downstairs. W one is our, our home, our residence where we live and sleep, and the other part would be for commerce. So, so I, I think they do have a certain amount of time to, to complete things, so they're not running over just, just yet? Yeah. Right, so. I think it'd be very helpful, though, if we had, you know, if there was a, a plan that you could submit to the planning department that outlined, you know, uh, a schedule for the completion of the various improvements that had your own, at least your own internal timelines or deadlines that you're setting for yourself in, in that. Wasn't that part of the original? It was part of the original portion um, of feedback. That those would have that. Timeline in it because we one all, would we, think all so. we just need to do is dig that up. One would think so, right? As opposed to it might be helpful though to have to that attached to, you know, to this file as well. But we just defer to the other files. Uh, Dan, and I I also have a question for, uh, or a couple of questions for Peter. 
Um, one is date re relating to this uh, memo or email from Charles Morrison uh, dated February, uh, January 17, 2020. Um, the last paragraph of that says, once the town has approved a facility, the applicant needs to obtain a form from the Department of Agriculture, complete and submit form. Then an officer will go out and inspect the facility to ensure compliance with the department regs, then issues a license. Now, uh, since there, since there is no license, since this would not be a commercial kennel license, is the license that re that's referred to in this particular paragraph a different license, separate license? So he, uh, if you look at the section just above that last paragraph, he was referring to the grooming aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the applicant has indicated they're not going to be doing the grooming aspect of the business. So uh, those particular comments don't apply. I think at the time he thought they were doing the, uh, the day daycare and as well as the grooming, but I think the record has been clarified on that. Yeah, that's that's why I wanted the clarification yep. on the memo. I kind of thought that was the case, but uh, you know, the the word license didn't have any particular defining issues. Secondly, is is there any uh, regulation in the town of uh, Weathersfield regula uh, regulations that limit the number of uh, dogs, canines, or other pets that uh, a a a household can have? or possess or own on their site? I, I don't believe we established that threshold. Um, and if we do, I'm not aware that it's enforced by anybody. So uh, I, I believe the keeping of um, pets, dogs, cats, et cetera, depending on how you define pets, uh, does not have a preset limit. We do have a separate set of uh, livestock regulations. So if someone were to argue that livestock is a pet, then maybe you have that issue, uh, but um, not as it relates to, to dogs, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Maybe so maybe on, if on that basis, team. if they actually, if, if uh, the applicants owned five dogs that they cared for in their own home, uh, you know, there would, there would be no problem with any violation of uh, town regulations. So it's the distinction between keeping an animal for your own purposes vo versus uh, keeping them for compensation. So that's the trigger. If, there, if there's a monetary exchange for uh, the keeping of it, it kicks it in into that other uh, a area. So right, but in terms of the actual number of animals, correct. there's, there's yep. really no distinction. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I had a question, Peter, just you know, uh, sometimes, you know, when, when we have these approvals, they stay with the property, right? They run so with the land, yes. They run with the land. So, so we'll, Tucker and Marcy are saying, we will, we will do this. We will have three, five, two including you, and five dogs. If we gave this approval, we don't know what the next people would do. And I think that's why maybe Tom, and I won't speak for Tom, but mentioned that maybe you want to attach a time uh, uh, factor so that it, uh, if the property does change ownership or you want to keep tabs on this to see how it's working, uh, you have the ability to review it at a, a point down the road. Did, did we have something I thought we discussed where we were not allowed to do it? Yeah, I think there's a debate about that still. I think we've sort of maintained that practice, but I think there may be case law that um, kind of questions the uh, ability to do that. Um, uh, just want to indicate that uh, I've been opposed with this application. Um, I welcome you folks to town and I did when you first came in here well, a year and a half ago almost, uh, you know, wanting to get into the place before Christmas. Um, and number one, uh, work that which was ordered by this commission has not been completed. Uh, number two, I don't think that uh, the, the site is proper for the type of use that they want. I disagree as, as far as the potential noise is concerned. We're talking about size of dogs. I don't think the size of dogs has anything to do <coughs> with the noise potential. And I, I am concerned uh, that the applicant has a couple of dogs of their own. They said they are going to have three additional dogs that they'll be boarding. There'll be five dogs. If I have five small dogs that are loud, it can be a hindrance 
uh, within the neighborhood. And so for that reason, I am here. I'm opposing this uh, particular application. So that's me. So I'm going to go back to my notes here. Um, so what, what's going through some of the options that are going through my mind? Um, again, I raised it, raised it before. How are we going to ensure compliance? Um, do we want to put a timeline or would, would we consider a timeline? Leashes for the dogs, uh, you know, things like that. Um, remind me, were there days of the week? Was this a seven day a week operation? Um, I mean, it, it really just depends on when we're requested to watch to animals. Watch it, right? But you're not putting any restrictions on it, so it could be seven days a week. Correct, based on our right. own schedules. Yeah, okay. All right, any other questions for the applicant? The thing that bothers me about the, the compliance is if, like in my neighborhood, there was an application where there was a home, home occupation and there was a question of how many cars were going to be in the parking lot and this and that. Like, and like the neighbors are the only ones that are ever going to observe that kind of thing. So I, 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 can, I can see the neighbor's point where we're sort of putting some responsibility on them for policing, but at the same time, it's everywhere. <laughs> like, that, that's kind of how this process goes. If there's a complaint, then they check, and then, um, but then, there may not be that many cars parked in the driveway in, in my neighborhood on the day the person comes. So it's, I don't know, I, I guess I don't really think that there's a real way of resolving that as far as I'm concerned. I just, we just have to approve assuming that we're going to be in compliance. We can't assume that they won't be. Right. Right. All right. Are there any additional questions for the applicant or should we uh, entertain a motion on the hearing itself? be closed yes any, any last any yeah. last comments yeah, okay i make a motion to close the hearing thank you a second all right all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. anyone opposed aye. so let's have a little dialogue um obviously a couple of people already stressed or, or stated their their thoughts a bit um yeah i mean i mean i don't think it's particularly useful in terms of a uh, business um, down there. I think it's, I think it's got potential to have problems, mm -hmm. um, and the comp and how do you how do you ensure compliance? Which is why you know, the appropriateness aside, the the temporary nature of of a permit um, at least makes somebody come back. And I don't think there's, I don't think there's a lot of upfront cost if you know a year from now this is not working out and and you know, and, and we all know it. I don't know how we'll know it, honestly, you know, a year from now. Um, you know, the neighbors are, s are likely to still come out in opposition, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, I, but I think if the property looks pretty blighted behind that fence where, the, where five dogs are, you know, living, um, you know, maybe, it, maybe there's more reason than just, you know, noise because we don't really want our property to run down anymore just because of the way it's being used, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not saying that they would. I'm just saying there's more opportunity, right? Um, I tend to favor utilizing our traditional approach of, of uh, putting uh, a you know a timeline uh, onto the approval and having them come back in, you know at a certain point in time to see how things have have. Uh, have transpired in the meantime where there's been additional complaints or whether there's not been, even though there may be some, uh, you know, there may be some potential legal issue as to whether or not we are, we are empowered under state law to, to do that sort of thing. But, you know, in the absence of a clear definitive, you know, quote, ruling, uh, I, I tend to favor that as it gives us, you know, flexibility to prove things and still be able to, to back away at some point in time if it proves to be well, uh, an Im improper. My guess, my, I, I don't know. I'm, I would like to really tie it into the, uh, 
the, ti the timeline the for their yeah. previous approvals. So I don't know when that is, but off, you know, just yeah, on the off chance, I would think it might be around 18 months from now. If Peter can back me up on that or uh, indicate a, you know, an, an alternative date, I'm certainly open. So <coughs> was your logic to tie it to the original approval for the parking lot? Was that where you were? I would, I would tie it to the timeline that, that the, 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 you know, the earlier approvals had given them to complete so th that. So they have a, a five-year time frame from the date of approval to complete the improvements, uh, or they can get an extension from you guys. So um, my recollection, it was only approved January of last year, so they're only a, a year. Four more years. They literally have four more years to make the um, you know five-year um, compliance timeline. So um, I would I would sir I would probably then uh, put a you know a timeline for you know a uh, not necessarily a re a, it'd have to be a re I guess a reapplication, but I'd weigh the fees and so forth uh, for the reapplication at the end of two years. Have had, have it no longer than two years before they come back and uh, we're able to have a report as to whether or not there have been any actual delays uh, or any actual problems that have have really transpired as a consequence of them having this this home occupation, which under state law is is definitely not a kennel uh, anymore, and from the evidence that's been placed to us, it largely seems to be a, a, uh, a practice that they essentially uh, share their, their time and their efforts uh, and their love of, of uh, canines with uh, you know, friends, people with whom they have an established relationship with. Um, and I don't really, I don't see that there's any real empirical evidence to uh, demonstrate the, um, uh, uh, the fears that have been expounded by uh, those that are in opposition. So, uh, you know, in the absence of any, you know, any real evidence to that, uh, I'm inclined to support a property owner in, in terms of the, their uh, the use and enjoyment of their property. Uh, after we had the last application of the kennel, this is not a comparison, I'm not comparing the size, believe me, uh, but <coughs> because of that discussion, I think there's plenty of evidence that one could find that there's a potential for noise. Uh, so to say that there's no noise, I think it, it, it's not correct, uh, uh, potential for noise. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this is, these are applicants who are coming in and asking for a special permit. And a special permit is a permit which one of the criteria is that fits into the neighborhood, that it's not going to disrupt the neighborhood, that it's going to be a part of the neighborhood. And I just don't see what we're trying to do in Old Wethersfield and develop Old Wethersfield is consistent with what uh, these applicants are bringing forth. Uh, and therefore, on the basis of seeking a special permit, there is that added burden uh, of showing us and being convinced as a commission member uh, that uh, it does fit in with the community. And I, I'm sorry, I just don't see it, and, uh, and, and I'm opposed to it. I, I, I tend to agree with you, Dan. Um, I, I, I don't feel like it fit, fits in well with the neighborhood. I, I love dogs. I have one small, nosy dog, <laughs> if you will, who could be labeled as a nuisance if he drove around my neighborhood. But really, I, I, you know, I, 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 it isn't that I don't like dogs, I'm concerned for the businesses that are already there. I'm concerned for Alien Market, I'm concerned for the others, but what impact would this have on them and others that are already trying to establish it? We're having enough trouble in this community policing those things that we have approved. Um, and because, well, is it too noisy, is it not too noisy? And we're back and forth and it comes before the ZBA. I, I, I think that this is something which needs, we need to take the responsibility uh, as a planning and zoning commission and meet these things head on and say, gee, these are nice folks, I'd like to help them. And I really would, they're nice folks. I welcome to the community, but I just do not see it as a special permit. They meet the criteria for a special permit to be granted. 
George? Yeah, um, it has been brought up uh, on another negative. I think this site is really too small. It's not just for the thin old weather field where it's a little more congested right there than it is in other parts of Main Street, for example. Further up, it's more residential. Um, or even e either direction. This is really a congested site and it's in conjunction with the next door neighbor. They, they have the facilities there. Uh, she, they don't really have their own parking for any of these drop-offs and pickups of dogs. Uh, th that's what I mean by small site. They're relying <coughs> on, on dropping them off on the public parking areas. And I don't think those public parking areas are necessarily for that purpose. Uh, although people use them that way, they do have difficulties in that part of all weather's field with the parking areas. So uh, I think I'm going to say less than that. So, so what's your... What's your response to the fact that every business in town uses the parking along the street? That's the purpose of the public parking, right? They are, and I'm not trying to say they can't use it, but they ought to have more of their own. And they really, what do they have, one or two people on that side yard that they're supposed to be providing near the tree? Two, one? Uh, actually, the side parking that you're mentioning <coughs> was not approved for parking as part of the no, it's part of the site plan. That was so they don't not have any on site parking. Well, they have room to park, but it's not designated official parking spaces per the plan that you approved last year. Just that's even worse. I don't like hearing that. Okay. But it is it is just a drop off situation. Mm. But it's not without I I I'm certainly not jumping up and down with joy. I can't really say that I think it's particular particularly well placed somewhere else in town might be just fine or someplace else even in old weathersfield might just be fine but you're dead center in town yeah. putting everybody in, in a little tiny fenced area and it's possible it could work out okay i just don't really know and i guess i'd like to put some constraints on it if we go down this road so so um i, I agree with so many i agree with so many of you um on the commission today. You know, the other thought I had too is that the timeline, right? We're talking about timelines. And if you look at the, the history of the permit, special permit approvals that we've done on this property in the past, um, the type of approvals we've had is for uh, when we had the bean and grape, they were dispensing in sale and dispensing of alcoholic beverages. Um, but prior to that, there was a special permit to operate a coffee shop. Prior to that, retail, market, cafe, dining, outdoor seating. Those were the type of things that were being approved as a special permit for this site. And that all is in keeping with our special permit criteria, right? Suitable location, like you mentioned, Dan, or neighborhood compatibility. So that is consistent with, with our regulations. Now, if, if the applicant, you know, we did you know, we were very excited and supportive when the applicant came to us last year, January 2019. And they, you know, were talking about having office space and they were also talking about having a small business. And uh, as I recall, we were actually were willing to meet that at having an additional meeting, you know, right after the holidays to support that, to support that permit. Um, but we haven't heard anything since then. So for me, I, I would be okay if we were to extend a timeline for this, for this uh, I'll call it a doggy business, in a nice way, right? It's not a kennel, it's not, you know, it's a small little business. I would support it for like a, you know, a little bit of a timeline if it would help them get to that next level. Similar to what one of the speakers said tonight, you know, like, okay, maybe you just need to make extra you know, do this temporarily till you get to the next level. But I haven't heard anything like that. What I heard is there's a lot of undefined characteristics about this business, you know, with the doggy. And I, based on that, based on that type of business, I don't think it's a suitable location. I don't think it meets neighborhood compa compatibility. So I wouldn't be in support of this application. 
and I'll just say I'm totally in favor of it. Um, I don't see the incompatibility. I think you're you could just as easily put a couple tables and some seats out there and that would annoy enough neighbors that that would then be a nuisance you know so there's and we have that situation in other parts of this of this exact area i i think in terms of this being like a disruption it's it would be no more a disruption than any other home could possibly have i understand the whole exchange of money and, and that um and i know that the prior to this being a an approval it's been functioning as what they're asking for and the direct neighbor business owner who's there all day every day during the hours that the dogs would actually be in the home or around the home even hasn't noticed anything so I, I, I and it's a it's very much a dog loving community I think everywhere you go there's dog bowls outside all the businesses I think people would come get their dog, go to other locations in the neighborhood. I, I, don't, I don't see it as an incompatibility. I understand that it's right dead center, but it's just the nature of where they are. Uh, and you know, so, it would be so I'm gonna put you on the spot, right? Because um, in terms of a, of a motion, we wanna try a positive motion, right? Mm -hmm. and, and since you seem in favor of doing so, I'm gonna ask you to start crafting something that with the input of the other people around you and some of the concerns that you've heard yeah. What constraints would you put on it such that you could try and get a positive m positive motion and, 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 a, and a positive vote? All right. So so the motion would obviously be a, a motion to approve with what? Mm. You know, if there's a fence as shown in the plans, do you, would you propose it to be higher or lower? It's already gone through historic commission, so I'd, I'd yeah, I think we're that's <laughs> you're settled on that, right? Um, there's size of dogs on the website, you know, should we try and apply it? Uh, you know, as, as we go and try and put these things in here, it's all about compliance and how do we know, right? So I'm actually gonna throw away at us at the end, but let's talk about under what, what conditions it would be acceptable. So there's a fence as presented in the plans. Is there a number of dogs we wanna apply? You know, there's, there's no constraints on the number of your own dogs, but under the circumstances, I think it's, I, I, I'll let Peter tell me if I'm wrong or some of the other land use lawyers. Um, I think under a special permit, if we put a number of dogs in the house in general, I don't think that would be inappropriate, right? And, I, and I've heard two of their own. I don't, I don't want, you know, five of their own plus three more. That's never gonna get my vote. So is five a total number of dogs allowed here at all? Oh, so you would say, five total in the home at any given moment in time. Because effectively I'm trying to control their the number of their dogs, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you think I'm overstepping? We're gonna have a new staff position called dog counter so, or something so, like that. So, <laughs> so no, this is going, but no I'm, I'm, I'm with you, right? I, I, I'm but I hear, I hear what you're saying. No, I'm I hear what you're saying. I'm way, right? And if, and if you're gonna do that, I would probably say six just to, to have a, a little extra buffer you know if they had another dog i don't really want to be in the business of controlling how many dogs somebody can have you know three for their business and that and then maybe three maximum so that it's reasonable but you know not uh, imposing additional w you know they may be planning on getting a dog tomorrow that i you know we, we didn't get into so right, right. um okay yeah, we, we, we consider that let, let me let me throw this other thing right what's gonna what I'm struggling with is I have no desire to make the town responsible to check up on these people, that's right? I mean, that's, that's what this is all gonna come down to. Um, and I'm, and I'm right? So it certainly doesn't happen often enough, but you know, if we made the applicant certify something, you know, if, if it's gonna be more than a year on an annual basis, I'm only doing five or six dogs, period, right? Something where they gotta come back and say, no, no, I'm ob obeying by the, the issues. I know it's not often enough unless it comes in weekly. How do I, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it's an attempt to make the owner responsible to follow the rules. That's, and I don't know if that's a good answer or not, but it's something that I thought of, right? One of the things I alluded to that, that, it, that I'd recommend as a condition, and I was asking the applicant, and, and it's a matter that the uh, their fellow uh, business neighbor brought up, and that is, uh, you know, issues of, of liability, damages, and the like. 
and it would not be a a you know a, a s seriously difficult thing for them to do to provide us with an annual certificate of insurance of liability showing excess liability insurance of, of one million dollars that would I think tend to cover you know any realm of, of, of damages uh, that could occur with the operation of, of this business or this you know it's really not a business but it's more of a uh, I'm gonna watch your dog if you you know so interesting you know you're putting a dollar value on it but I wonder if that's I, I don't know a lot about insurance like this but it's a, it's a business to, it's similar it's to you know uh, a business uh, I'd be more inclined to say I want to see that you have proof of insurance for running a business in your home isn't that you know yeah well, right essentially it, yeah it, it, it business that? policy a writer because if you're taking a dog down the street and you're on a leash and they said they're going to take the dogs on walks you know on a daily basis uh, and the dog bit somebody uh, what what happens that, that's business liability uh, somebody could get hurt Right. Uh, it's it's inherent. Uh, I'm a dog lover. That's not that's not the point. Right. But it, it your your homeowner covers you for your own. Well, but it's not going to cover me for a business. That's my point, right? It, so it's is not going to cover me as a business, and so therefore uh, I need to know uh, that number one that there's sufficient uh, business policy, and you may have difficulty finding such a policy. Those aren't easy to you know e easy to get today. Uh, there's too much advertising about dog bites and what to do if you got a dog bite. Uh, you, you gotta listen to the news every night to listen to that garbage. Uh, but at the, at, the, at the same time, it, it's a potential serious point because we're dealing with animals uh, that we have no knowledge of their propensity um, and you know, in safety within the neighborhood. So just because they're walking mm, doesn't mean anything uh, to me. Uh, so yeah, it's just another reason why I'm opposed to the application of w as to where it is. Because there are hundreds of people walking all over the place. Yeah. Why, well, I mean, you mentioned that Rover was covering Milton Insurance. Would we want to have, I assume there's some kind of agreement between her and Rover. Would we want that agreement to be seen by the town so that we're, not c we're covered for the liability? It's not that we're covered for the liability. I'm concerned about the public being uh, the public being covered uh, by liability. Yeah, there's so there's vet Gosh. care for injuries to the dog. There's vet care for injuries to the sitters, walkers, residents. This is like the Rover website. So they have coverage for physical damage for to a pet owner's personal property or direct damages or injury to certain third parties caused by a Rover dog. So they like this isn't the first time that this has ever been approved. So I, I feel like. I would still think that it would be reasonable that, that they could obtain. Yeah, but I don't want to add a million release. dollar rider to yeah, something no. that could end up for such a small home occupation business would end up wiping out whatever they stood to earn. Well, I, I concur with that. Yeah. But it would be helpful to for. know that, that, you know, that there is that kind of protection and that uh, we have you know, proof of that coverage. So some kind of certificate, you know, Texas. whether it's. No, no, so, no, no they, pr they probably, if they're, if they're a license, yeah. if they're licensed under sure Rover, they, they probably have that, yeah. right? So, so, uh, so, so that's they probably. They copy of that to as us. Like signed right, exactly. That's probably an easy way to That should work. be done, I think, on an annual basis. As a condition, right. And the, I guess the other question I have is the, Permit we're letting them to have. They can have the three dogs by the state law, without any relationship to Rover. It's a, so they could take anyone off the street that has, had never went through that website, and that's one thing I'm leery about the insurance on. Well, if it's through Rover, the dog is covered, or some some kind of coverage is taking place. If I walk up, go down there. I'd like to take care of my dog, and we have an agreement. My dog is not covered under the Rover agreement. That's that's what I'm. Somehow there's got to be some business plan. I'm not yeah. giving any. I, I don't have an answer on that. Yeah. But I'm, no, I'm concerned about it, and, and I'm concerned about it giving an approval without having answers. 
Well, that's what I'm trying to establish is this is like a home business that's dealing with animals and we have no coverage or no thoughts of that within our we system. I'm just saying in this case, have it be the model that is presented that way. Yeah, but what you're describing is a favor. Watching somebody's dog as like being friendly and then, I don't know, if something happened, then your homeowner's insurance or, you know, you'd be on the hook for it. But if it didn't go through the app, then, you know, it's not covered by Rover. I mean, I, so I, I think that's no different than. Yeah, I, I, and, it, and, I, I and, that, would, and that would be so, and that would be so detailed. Perhaps, right? you, know, perhaps you know, the issue of, of you know, reasonableness of, of proof for something could be done, handled by, by staff. Would that be too great of a burden, Peter, for staff to, to make, to have some kind of documentation that provides, you know, some reasonable, you know, certainty that, you know, liability that may uh, be incurred by as a result of, of this home occupation uh, would, would, be, would be covered in, in the event of injury to the general public. I, I'll be honest with you. We're getting into areas for the very first time that we've never gotten into before in order to fit this in, you know, insurance and the number of dogs. And I mean, this is, get, this is getting. I, I question the need for insurance. Yeah, so I, I, I'm leery of getting into any of those things. Um, there was testimony that the dogs are covered under Rover's insurance and they have homeowner's insurance. Right. So I think um, I, I don't want the town. Um, you know, accepting any kind of liability because maybe we didn't establish enough of, I, I just really right. um, yeah. uncomfortable right. with uh, with going into that whole uh, arena when we've never ever done that before. So um, I think we need to keep that out of the equation. If there's gonna be a motion, okay. I'd, I would advise you to stay away from that. Is there anything more to add to the motion? Like so to except what is the motion? So. So there's uh, a limit on the number of dogs, there's a fence, um, and then it's, so far I, I don't know that there's anything more, right? Um, Is the three foot fence adequate? Probably not. Well, I think because it's then it's it's we would have gonna, a restriction of no unattended dogs. Um, <coughs> I don't know that we would save a leash, but I think that's something that uh, that's they were agreeable to them. just I guess so I'd say like no unattended and then, you know, that relieves many of the issues related to like a three and a half foot fence not really blocking two dogs from getting at it yep. <laughs> on uh, either side of it, you know. But and, so and, a, and a period of time? It's a period of time I was I was thinking two years was okay. what was discussed. So I didn't want to defer from that unless. Okay. So um, there's the sign agreement, the check-in. Um, the what? The boarding, did we, did we just say that? I'm sorry, what, what were the last two things you said? The uh, the, the two-year check-in, the two years coming, coming back. No, did we, we don't have to say no boarding, right? Or like I no no I overnight. Was, I nope. thought that, that was in the very nature of it, yeah. is that right. there was overnight, there is overnight. Yeah. Oh, there is overnight? Yes. Oh, okay. Could right. be leaving town and leaving your dog. Oh, okay, I thought it was a... Uh, Go ahead and take this one. No grooming. That no grooming. No, yes, no, no grooming. grooming. Uh, fence first. We're saying six. I'd rather only limit the number of paying dogs, in my opinion. But that's just me. Well, I think the law limits that, right? Right. So we would say no more than three paying dogs, is, my, is my thing. And then, you know, because you're saying they could go out and buy. Five more, oh, you know, three more. But and and your, and and your your proposal is that's okay. You're yeah. not going to bother trying. Okay, so I, I don't. I, I don't, don't know. I'm no, no, I know. We're trying to limit the number of dogs in the household versus yeah. like how can they, if they have a friend over, yep, and their friend has four dogs or something, and they're just there for a couple days, and then or not a couple days, but they're a couple hours, but a couple days. But then, and then a neighbor sees that, that's an issue for them. So I'm just, I'm not a, not a fan of it in general. I think it's crap. Okay. Well, 
I, I looked up um, dogs per square foot for residential. Simsbury has dogs, cats, and smart <laughs> domestic pets provide no more than six animals to be kept on a non-commercial kennel is operated. And then there's another clause that said in the state of Connecticut, you can only have six dogs on your property. So there is regulation in the state of Connecticut for the number of animals. Okay. In other towns. So probably in the town regs. Yeah. yeah. Which we don't have that, right? So if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, we are we are down to no attended dogs, a two year um, approval, right? They gotta come back. A limit of three paying dogs, which I think is kinda redundant, but whatever it's very specific for us. And a fence as presented in the plans. Four things. Right? Uh, the signed what is rover. It? Do we want that signed rover insurance or so oh. yeah. no, I mean I, 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 I'm I don't I think we according to especially according to Peter's testimony, we don't want to get into that whole issue that relates to liability issues. Right. So I mean, yeah. Okay, so I think I've got, I've got four things. I would say the fence uh, is one stipulation on that, whether the fence would need to be completed. Before they if, start? If that's, before the process, this whole conversation, that's been like a requirement, and I don't think that's been said. So the fence as presented in place prior to prior operations? To yeah, because I mean, that's, Okay. All right. So that's the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right. There's eight of us. Needs it requires five to pass. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Make sure we have a roof. Okay. Those opposed, just to do the count. So we have five five against. So three is not going to get you there. All right. I'm sorry, did not the, the positive uh, proposal didn't pass. All right. All right. Next item on the agenda. Moving on, item 3.3, .3, application 203420Z, Clarity Ed, test prep, special permit in accordance with 5.2 of the Weatherfield Zoning Regulations for a change of use at 1323 Southstein Highway. This is a brand new application. Hello, everyone. Maybe uh, just let me, for the record, Richie joining us again? Yes. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Uh, my name is Kumar Babba. Uh, I'm head of the operations for Clarity at Test Prep. Uh, so do you want me to say briefly what we do? Yes, please just yeah, describe sure. what it is that you're going to do. So uh, Clarity at Test Prep basically provides uh, test preparation for high stakes exams like SAT, ACT, uh, AP exams, uh, Olympiad exams, uh, uh, and state tests too. Right? and some after-school programs, right? Our center is basically open uh, from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. on a regular weekday because we only do after the school. Mm -hmm. And then uh, weekends we're open 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., right? Uh, and the parents drop is, off the kids. Is that both Saturday and Sunday or just Saturday? Pardon? Uh, you said weekends. Is that Saturday and Sunday, 9 to? Yes. Uh, I mean, depending on the demand, we don't know all the details, but right now we are thinking of opening Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Uh, each class is for two hours, roughly, two hours exactly. Uh, the parents drop off the kids and then they take. They're not supposed to wait uh, at the center. Um, yeah, I think most of the other details are described in the proposal, but uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. All right. Questions? How many staff members do you expect to so, um Five. So we are thinking of four rooms. So we need four teachers and one uh, receptionist. So five, I would say. 
And what age group are we talking about? This one? We only deal with uh, most of our kids because it's uh, high school exams, college exams, and graduate exams. Uh, like we also deal with uh, GMAT, GRE, LSAT, uh, but most of them are in the high school range. Uh, so I recall Plus your your uh, your materials. You you're looking to have um, approximately twenty five students. Yeah. That that's. I mean, that's what we're expecting. That's your that's your aim. To yeah. Have well, you could have five or ten on one day and uh, thirty is the next. Uh, yes, the demand is very fluctuating. I mean, ideally, we want to have a stable one, but uh, we cannot force anyone, unfortunately. So it would be B possible, like twenty-five students in one classroom. You were saying you had four classrooms. Yes, because so most of the like parents, 25. right? Uh, they prefer small group, so we only operate uh, a lot of the times in small group. Okay, so, so really five students in a class then. Five to six, five yeah. Per yeah. Classroom. Do you have to restructure the interior or did the YMCA leave it in reasonable shape? No, it's in a very bad shape. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, we got the permits for all that. Re uh, redo yes, the yes. walls and all that. Because they were uh, running it as a daycare, so they had a lot of it is open space and we had okay. to partition so but I was uh, you're, talk you're in a good situation I've been around it I even walked the whole building for the first time in my what 40 years I'm here and uh, I know I've proved it in the past but I never walked around the back side there were businesses on that side I didn't even realize that and uh, the parking's in great shape down there mm -hmm. I wish the owner of the upper area would do the same up near uh, Buffalo Wild Wings mm -hmm. Ron wanted that for a long while but anyway, no, you're, you're in good shape there, yeah, and you have a light going out to the silent beam there mm -hmm. for access, and uh, that's all fine. And it's literally like so, uh, 520 I, parking I, I, You know, your, your business is near you were fine. I even went in and talked to one of them, and that one was there. And everything's in good shape, like I said. So you, your construction inside is yes, we already going talked. to take a little while, a few months to make. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, the, the parking situation, you really shouldn't need a whole lot given that you that the, generally speaking, the students will be probably dropped off, you know, if they're of the younger variety, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One would hope. But let's let's assume for a moment that they aren't. What you is the parking situation? So my, my, my guess is they aren't allowed technically to be so, geez. George, 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 right. let me finish. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, the parking on the site, is it appropriate for this use? There's yeah. no discussion. So, the, the, one of the uh, good aspects of this is, as was mentioned, that kids get dropped off at 3, which is before the uh, dinner uh, rush for the restaurant, and then after 6, um, so the timing, they avoid that kind of peak time when the restaurant's going to be. The other uh, benefit is the property to the north is owned by the same owner. Mm -hmm. And if you recall, when he redid the parking lot, he kicked a connection through to the two lots so you can travel through. So if there was um, an issue at the peak time, there's all that extra parking uh, next door. So um, And it's even closer to the door. So, um, But I think the parents will, you know, find spots nearby, drop the kids off, and, and then uh, you know, take off. So, uh, it, and it lends itself to a nice traffic flow, unlike the, the Russian school for math, which you have to go back yeah. and then around. So uh, it's a much better mm -hmm. situation um, th than, than that uh, similar uh, business. So I, I, don't, I don't have a concern. Plus, I think there's 50 parking spaces anyway. So th the parking in the back is, at least in m whenever I've been there, has been uh, uh, mostly available. Yeah, I mean, frankly, that was that was my concern too because I've, you know, I'm not proud. I've been to Burger King drive-through and I've watched <laughs> the, the people, you know, occupying that parking lot, driving in and out and around in circles in the other one, parking at the property beyond it, you know, and th this one has signalized circulation. It has substantial parking to the west of the building that looks like 
on any given day, it's dramatically underutilized. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's you know it's a better situation than you know if, if they were if they were all high school kids, I would I would be more comfortable that there wasn't going to be parking. But I mean, if some of them are you know grad school kind of things, people will park. But you know if, if the maximum number of students at any given time is 25, you have five employees. You know you're looking at even even at times when there is, you know, ingress and egress for the next class, you know, there's there's enough parking for it. Is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak? I think to, to keep in mind though, we are talking older high school students though, so the kids prepping for SATs, ACTs, AP exams, those kids drive. Yeah. They do. Yeah. But it is 25. It's 25, so there should be plenty of parking, but I don't, I don't think there'll be too much traffic. I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to close the hearing. Thank you, George. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. How about a motion for the application? I just have one question. Sure. If you, don't mind. Sure. you can't. Um, you can't now. Said I. Oh, never mind. It's not that important. Maybe you can ask us the question, and we'll see if his head goes up and down or sideways. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to ask yeah. it this way. Well, <laughs> what if, I was just wondering if there's any other locations in um, in, our, in the state. If there's any other of these type of facilities that are the, the Clarity Ed test prep facility. Interesting. That's all. But I just figured that out on my own. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do operate in other towns. <laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 the record. real reason Off why the record. I really like your <laughs> town. Well, no, we're uh, still here. I mean, you make a motion to reopen the hearing. I think it's ideally located in the center of Connecticut, and uh, a lot of our parents come from southern Connecticut and northern Connecticut. We thought this is perfect, you know. Uh, people are complaining uh, who come from southern Connecticut that it's too much time, you know. I think uh, that's why we really, really, as I was telling PJ, uh, Weathersfield is optimally located. Because people can come from Glastonbury, Simsbury. It, it's like perfect 20 minutes thing. Mm -hmm. When you got 91? Exactly, exactly. And they're not too inside, you know. <laughs> and now Yolanda won't, e won't even acknowledge. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I think a motion to approve the application is submitted. Second. All right. All right. Thank you both. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. Good luck. When you're going to be in operation, is it six months from now? Yeah. All right. Good. 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 All right, is there any other business? No? So we have minutes. We have uh, two sets of minutes. Uh, remind me of the dates. There was one, obviously, on the... Uh, January 7th. January 7th. And January 22nd. 22nd. 23rd. Was it 23rd? That's what it says. Needs to be corrected. Right. No, they all say the 23rd. Right. Okay. They all do? Well, they say 2019 also. The agenda. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have the. M Would anybody like to make a motion on the minutes of January seventh? Other than the fact that we need to change the date on it. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. On the January twenty second, again with a date change required. Move to approve as amended. Second. Move. Yep. Yeah, so Oops. it should it should be Wednesday, January twenty second. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> uh, although it says the twenty third, two thousand twenty. Oh. Two thousand twenty yeah. is right this time. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good. Uh, staff reports. Just uh, two quick things. Um, you may or may not have heard that the uh, uh, noise issue uh, at Lucky Lou's. Uh, patio for the music was uh, appealed to the ZBA from the zoning enforcement uh, officer's order. Um, the ZBA, um, not don't quote me on this. I'm not quite sure what they did, but my the gist of it was that they gave 
<laughs> Lucky Lou, another year to operate the music. However, there was a condition that if he violates the decibel levels, again, the stop work order or cease and desist order goes immediately into effect. I think that's the gist of what they did. So, um, whether- you can go a year with the what, the condition? I didn't see the written um, decision, so I'm, as I say, I'm oh, just okay. kind of uh, 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 like giving you the translation. And if they don't make it, if they don't abide by it. If he violates the noise, the, the order goes immediately back into effect and he can't have music after that. So how that gets implemented will be interesting to so see. It's moving under a cloud a little bit. Yeah, but so they technically overruled the zoning officer, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, and withdrew his order. So um, the only other, the other thing to mention is ye yesterday, and many of you were there, uh, we had a workshop with the uh, EDIC and the Redevelopment Agency to discuss the uh, self-storage moratorium. Uh, we were joined, since it was a public meeting, by the owner of 1000 Silas Dean Highway, Mr. Funaro, um, uh, and had a uh, bit of a back and forth about um, not only the moratorium, but also his property and uh, historic um, potential uses and future uses of, of the property. Um, so the EDIC uh, at their meeting next week is going to discuss this moratorium issue a little more in depth. Uh, I did provide um, the group that had assembled with a, a list of potential regulatory options going forward. So um, that conversation uh, will continue. The uh, first 180 days of the moratorium uh, are up in the beginning of March. You may have two more meetings before that, so this will be on your agenda at one of those two meetings for discussion in terms of what you wanna do. You did have the option of granting an additional 180 days for the moratorium. Since we're just now discussing what the options are, I would presume that you would wanna maybe grant some additional time, whether it's the full 180 days is, will, will be up to you, but nevertheless, just wanted to keep you uh, in the loop on that. So we're gonna have additional meetings of this group uh, in, in, in the future um, to keep the, keep the momentum uh, going. So I thought it was a, a good conversation um, yesterday, so. I'd like to congratulate our town finance development director. They did a good job on that memo that came to the meeting. And he presented the facts, I thought, quite well, including regional and situations with other towns and and the kind of uh, set of conditions and so forth. And the only negative thing about the meeting was the presentation was on that, from that one person who talked the whole meeting. And, uh, but other than that, uh, we, we got a lot out of it. And uh, uh, George couldn't talk as much when he, <laughs> he monopolized the conversation. He took the spotlight away from you, George, a little bit? Isn't that, isn't that yeah. true? Yeah. Wow, well, yeah. He wouldn't even let you talk. <laughs> and you were the chairman of it. Anyway. anyway, it was a good meeting, seriously, and I thought uh, this session was very economic. Okay. I like no, to see more of that kind of thing. No, I thought it was informative, particularly to hear more in detail about about that use and and mm -hmm. trends in the industry, and incidentally to hear more about past efforts to have developed that property and and what at least the property owner thinks, you know, the market is for different things and what it is not for different things. So, you know, that that's probably not the appropriate forum to focus on that building. Right. But, you know, I think those discussions do need to continue. You know, it kind of sounded like he was, he had taken it off his radar screen, you know, because others were dealing with it. Um, you know, and I think we can deal with the self-storage thing, but I, but I think, you know, having, having the town encourage him to keep that property on his radar screen and work collaboratively with him to, to come up with something that's, that's good would be a positive thing. I prob uh, I've probably professionally met with that property owner more times than most of all the other properties in town combined. That's how much yeah. attention we've put towards that property over the years, sad to say, and obviously nothing's uh, transpired from that, so. Um, yeah. we, we, we might not want to add more of that kind of property in town for the reasons we 
realize. But it's not the worst thing in the world. It just doesn't provide a lot of jobs, and it does can provide pretty good taxes. The good, the kind that you can build, not the kind we have out on the Berlin Turnpike. And uh, so we're not talking about that. When I'm talking like the one at the northern end of the Silestine Highway, which is very nice and a kind in going in the right direction, but they now come in pretty elaborate and three and four stories and maybe even having other businesses in them, uh, you know, such as a restaurant or something on the first floor. And Peter will have to come up with a set of regulations I'd like to see more specifically as to, to the kind of thing we should would have in the future if anyone comes with one. I'll send a memo I think to we everybody. Just have to remember sure that we just got through with improving two, two buildings. We have an apartment uh, complex, a board and going in, from where 100,000 is, uh, is down to the end of the Silestine Highway is a traffic nightmare. And while they we're all looking for a great use, that, that a wonderful use that's gonna be beautiful for the town, architecturally, financially, it, it's difficult to find, it's not gonna produce a great traffic. deal of traffic, right? And this is not a point. This Good is, point. This is not I a like traffic it. generator. Yet, he is an individual who uh, came in. And I, by the way, I came in totally against this whole proposal. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm in favor of it, but I, I'm interested in listening to it because there's an individual who's willing to spend seven to ten million dollars developing property, you know, in the town of Wethersfield with no traffic. I mean, to me, that's something you got to look at. And <laughs> So let's not forget that. I think somebody else made the point about um, some senior housing and um, putting in storage units near senior housing. It, now the board is not meant to be senior housing, but for people who are thinking about, wow, this could be an opportunity for me. And look, right here is a place where I can put all of my Christmas things and right nearby. I think that's something to think about. It's it, it food for thought. Open that's right. It is. It's open that door for you. Oh, well, by the way, for the record, Mookie's best is now a Dodgers. Is he? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. What did he get? Uh, we'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and Jimmy, Jimmy for Jersey. Uh, how about the, do you care about the next uh, topic here? Uh, no, that's just, that's coming up. <laughs> Okay. We've got. We we'll, we'll, care, we'll care more in two weeks. Yeah, right. At the next meeting, you we'll, can care we'll about. We'll be it. there. Yes. Okay. It's going to be a late meeting. Only one applicant. No, we have another. At least one other. We added in. I'm looking forward to one. You don't like to meet one for, done. for one done, one and done, but this should right. be quick. So, motion to approve. I, I guess one last thing. I mean, we, we've, you know, not to beat a dead horse, um, but we've seen a lot of people coming in as a result of cease and desist either to us or to, to the ZBA. I think, I think it would be useful to get kind of an updated status report from our zoning enforcement officer since I don't think we've seen anything from him since last tall grass season, you know, as far as what's going on. And, and you know, I think a, a lot of us, you know, just driving around, you see boats and RVs in people's yards. <coughs> You see some buildings that look like there's something amiss. Um, I'd be curious to know what, what he's working on rather than, you know, have people come in with applications and only kind of find out by mistake that they're here because of a cease and desist. Okay. We'll get, I know the manager has asked him for a report uh, as well. So see if we can uh, get a copy of that for everybody and put it on the next agenda for informational purposes yep what about uh the, the wall at doggy daycare we are um still waiting for them to provide the engineer uh, building department with the engineered drawings of the wall seriously seriously it's beautiful winter to build knock on wood it will continue but um yeah i don't know how that one got delayed or lost in translation because we were telling them even before the approval was issued that we needed the engineered drawing. So um, I'm not sure we who. We were urged to vote on it because of the Yes, issue. yes, yeah. you, yes, you um, were. Yeah. And I've had repeated follow-up with the attorney and with the property owners about that. And uh, as of uh, this morning, when I checked with the building department, they still <coughs> did not have the uh, drawings that they need to 
to allow them to start building the wall. The basin is completed, um, and the wall was supposed to start immediately after that, but as of today, that is the status. Uh, do you know if there have been neighbor complaints continuing? Or yes, they have. They have primarily to the, the windows are closed. It helps well, yeah, it's winter, so I think that helps, but it's been, you know, beautiful. So, I mean, the thing could have been up and done and finalized by now, and hopefully the weather won't turn for the worst, and then we'll be out. Um, you know, even even more time. So uh, it's a it's a little frustrating, as you can imagine. And what is the name of that place? The building department won't let them build it because of building code. They need engineered, certified drawings from the foundation, the, the wind lo working? wind loads, and what was that? Are they working on them? I, mean I understand they are working on that, but I'm not sure what the how complicated a design that would be. But I wouldn't think so. Either. Yeah. Oh, it would take us weeks and a huge fee. A uh, billable hours. <laughs> <laughs> Finest three, engineer, three Mr. Green, meetings. needs to be on the case. <laughs> <laughs> Motion, please. Second, I think she already made it. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs>